Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the choice big gun mandate. Get it on. Welcome to the show. Jesse May Peluso is here. Very funny comedian. Podcast, Sharp Tongue, wherever you listen to finer podcasts. Probably doing dates around. <laughs> Got Netflix as a joke festival coming up in the Bourbon Room, May 10th. How's that work, Jesse May? Oh, you know, 10 years of failure or so. That's about the math, and they give you one of those. I'm excited about it, though. Second year doing it. Yeah, I think I'm doing one of those, too. Are you? Yeah, but I don't know exactly how it works. You you get it, and then you have to get together the comedians for for the show or for Yeah, you kind of can creatively put it together, orchestrate it however you want. I'm going to have a few circus acts, mm. probably a, a nice bridal judging mm. section. Mm. Just, I want to mix it up. I feel like there's too much comedy in comedy. There is. Yeah, yeah. You know? We need tragedy, like rides. More tragedy, more tears. Comedy's too basic these days. Well, uh, as luck would have it, Eric Kramer, who's former NFL quarterback and a friend of mine since I was, God, eight. <laughs> That's a think. long friend. Well, when you're old, yeah, it is. That's right. I forget you're old. When you're 11, it's not such an old friend. <laughs> <laughs> when you're 72, it's an well, achievement. Yeah, Eric was, uh, well, I've talked about him before. He's been in here before, but uh, Jesse May doesn't uh, know that uh, Eric started out in the San Fernando Valley at the uh, East Valley Trojans, where I used to play, probably uh, probably about five miles from here uh, when I was a kid. It's probably about seven. I was just uh, walking around through my neighborhood, and I saw on a um, phone pole stapled. East Valley Trojans, you know, try out for the for the Pop Warner football team. I, I mean, back when we used to use telephone poles as like a viable way of communication. Yeah, what happened to that text? That was a text message back in the day. I know. We use the <laughs> shit out of telephone poles, if you think about it, because not only are people talking using the telephone lines above it. Yes. But the pole itself we're using for communication as well. Bands, advertising. You know, wanna, lessons. Want to learn the piano, pull a tab off this thing. They're also holding up the conduit, the electrical conduit for all of us to have phone conversations. So That's it's like what a, I just yeah. said. Multi- okay, see, I thought you were saying just the post. But then, have you ever seen no, how I'm many saying it's the it's the most efficient way of communication ever because it's the... It's the lines above, yes. and it's the physical post. People break up. You ever see those ones where it's like, if you see this guy, he's going to cheat on you. Missing dogs, missing, missing dogs. pets. Oh, I saw the best found one. Found pets. <laughs> Tell me if you think this is ridiculous. I saw a missing bird. How are you ever going to get the bird back? Oh, you're never getting the bird yeah, back. It's like a missing gone. fish. You can't get a fish back. <laughs> and by the way, they give the name as if Tweety's going to respond. You know what I mean? It was actually Richard. Richard's going to respond. Yeah. Um, a missing bird. A missing bird. I feel like that is the the wife who's grieving for the missing bird telling the husband to do something. And he oh, just goes, yeah, funny. fuck it. I went to I Kinko's. See. I took this stapler. I put it on the telephone pole. Like, what? Yeah. Well, I can't hang a net. Now we just You know, wait. what else? Now we wait. It's in God's hands. It mm-hmm. sure is. It could be like a subliminal message, maybe. Maybe it's like a, a code for joining a new cult. Oh, the bird. Yeah, the bird. It's like oh. the bird is missing. Yeah, there's a lot of gay code. <laughs> Do There's you know, a lot you, of gay are you up code. With that? Are you up with the gay code? No, but whenever something doesn't <laughs> make sense, it's either for the blacks or for the gays. That's what I figured out. Constantly like, evolving. Well, like this is when where you start fires on the internet. Well, when you see a commercial, <laughs> and you're like, "Who leases car rims?" You go, oh, can you lease the car gays? rims? You, you can. I mean, the any, gays? anytime you say something, if you see something, and you go, "That doesn't make sense." If you go black <gasps> or gay, it'll snap into focus. Someone's fast. trying to hook up. Yeah. Yeah. When like. Like someone is selling, like you go on Craigslist or one of these things and someone says like um, Barbie lunch pail, $3, West Hollywood, you know, and you go, what the fuck? Oh, that's Who's a ring. selling a that's Barbie a ring. That's for like that $3? Wayfair, you know, <laughs> that's a hookup. Yeah. That means you go over to the dude's apartment and you, fin- you know, you, you negotiate. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? I've talked to... Guys, you're selling a three dollar lunch pail in West Hollywood, and I go, "What? What is this? This is not a business. How do you?" And they're like, mm. "And I said it's kind of a gay hookup thing," and they're like, "Yeah." Wow, to go mm-hmm. through all that—it's kind of romantic, though. You know, it's it's similar to putting a post on a 
on the telephone pole, you know, putting mm-hmm. like a little subliminal message on the internet. There's a romantic aspect there. I heard for swingers, it's an upside down pineapple. Oh, oh really? yeah, I've heard that too. Upside down pineapple. Why? They swing. I don't know. It's just odd enough to where. I yeah. Don't, I don't want to know why. <laughs> Well, it has to be a symbol that you're not going to run into any other place. Right. It means an upside down pineapple doesn't mean, oh, it's not a universal sign for Luau or Don Ho's in town or anything. <laughs> it just means one thing. Right. So I, I get this yellow East Valley Trojans sign up thing when I'm like seven. Good and, recall. And I'm, and I'm walking around. I hadn't thought about it in a million years. And uh, and I go, oh, I got to sign up to play tackle football. you know. So then I signed up. And then I run into the other kids that signed up. And one of them's Eric Kramer. And uh, his dad is one of the coaches. And then um, then we play the first year. I don't really play. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if I'm good or not, but I don't play that much. But then I come back for the second year, even though I, I sat on the bench the whole first year when I was seven. So then Eric Kramer's dad sees me showing up for the second year, you know, and um, he said to me, I'm tickled pink to see you here, which I didn't know what that meant when I was eight, but I, I, I liked it, you know. And he basically was saying is you sat on the bench the whole time you were seven and you came back for more. And I was like, I, I was like uh, an officer and a gentleman. I was like, I got nowhere else to go. Like, I, I'm seven. I don't want to fucking, I'm eight now. I don't want to sit at home with these fucking idiots rotting with no air conditioning in this cesspool of depression. I'm leaving. I don't care if I have to practice every day and then sit on the bench for every game. I'm leaving the house. So then I started showing up, and then I did start, and I was like kind of a star. And And he hung out, and then Eric went off to go play for the Valley Dolphins and I went off to play for the Sun Valley Falcons and then we completely lost way because we knew each other when we were like seven, eight, nine, mm. ten or something. And then uh, the next thing you know, I'm like in my early 20s, my playing days are over. I always wish I could have got to the next level and blah, blah, blah. And I'm I'm just watching, uh, you know, a Detroit game or Chicago <laughs> game or something. And I see the guy playing quarterback <laughs> His name Eric Kramer, and he wears his uniform the same way as that Eric Kramer from Pop Warner when we were nine. And I'm like, I think that Eric Kramer, who didn't start at the Pop Warner level, is now starting at the professional level. So he's a late bloomer. He gets to the NFL, plays 12 years in the NFL. I think he played one year in Canada, played 13 years of professional football. Uh, then he um, retires. Uh, then his son ODs on drugs. Then he tries to kill himself. Uh, Eric does with, oh a, my gosh. with like not not a not a cry for help, but a pistol under the chin, and a bullet goes through his tongue, through his brain. Craziness. They find him. He lives. He rehabs. He's normal now, <laughs> and on a mission. Yeah, what's and the mission? Be in here. Uh, he's got a book out. He's trying to. You know, uh, NFL, I think during the Super Bowl, ran some spots about mental health and stuff like that. He's he's basically on that, you know, on that board. And uh, nice. Talked to him on the phone for over an hour the other day. And, what a uh, story. Knows football, uh, obviously. And uh, crazy rec- recollection. Knows all the names of all his former coaches and assistant coaches and college coaches. It's, it's crazy. That is crazy, especially for football. With I don't know how often he got cranial injury, but that that sport is just well. Quarter, wild. Quarterbacks don't take as much, right? But yeah. the bullet through the head part does. Yeah, you know, yeah. we think that can, would leave a, a can, mark or two. Can leave a mark, yeah. So he'll come in here. He'll tell us uh, all about it. But uh, wow, yeah, man, that's why you got to hang around. You do have to hang around, and the tickled pink. That's also code on. That's gay code. That's gay code. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mr. Kramer. Jeez, it's in the bar. Yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah, man. We had coaches when you were allowed to coach. I mean, they, <laughs> I mean, they were allowed to call kids candy asses and pussies and kick their arms out when they're in a three point stance, and grab two dudes by their face masks and like mash their heads together and stuff. Like they, they, they'd get, they, they, they'd throw hands at you, work you, run you. 
Uh, embarrass you the good old days you. when you could get hit and embarrassed by your coaches. Oh, what happened oh. to America? The big embarrassment was <laughs> Duke Gallagher, our head coach, had had a prodigy daughter named Kelly who was like on the junior junior eleven year old like Olympic gymnast squad. And we'd be there, and he'd be doing push-ups, you know, and they'd get 28, 29, and guys' hands, arms would be wiggling, and they'd be sucking it up, and, like, one guy would go down, and he would say, my daughter's gymnastic team does more push-ups, and everyone would be like, ah, oh, my, you're messing with my mind. You can't, when, when you're a 10-year-old boy and you go, my daughter does more push-ups, you're, you so freak the fuck yeah. out. Like, you, you freak out. Who the fuck knows if it's true? It's also, it's a bunch of 80-pound girls who can do, you know, who can get on parallel bars and pull themselves up and throw yes. their feet down on. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of weight to strength like ratio ants. there. They're, yeah, yeah, like ants. strong like, like ants. The ants. Strong like ants. But still, to this 10-year-old hearing that uh, Kelly Gallagher's all-girls Olympic <laughs> team was doing more push-ups than me. No, no. It's really the name, too. Kelly Gallagher is a I delicate know. name. So that probably was like extra, a little bit more pain hearing that. If it was like some stronger. Gertrude. <laughs> Gertrude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Gertrude. Like, like, of course, yeah. Gertrude's doing more squats. Well, she's squatting. <laughs> she's got yeah, a thick neck. Yeah. Yeah. She's in pigtails and a thick neck. She's got calves. Yeah, so they do that. They uh, they deprive you of water. They call you candy asses. They yell stuff like you're getting blown out, like shit through a tin horn. Yeah. That was one. That's Sh- a fun one. Shit through a goose was another one. We got called rat bastards. That's oh, creative. We were playing we were playing before high school. Lacrosse. Lacrosse. Lacrosse basketball, soccer, softball. Let's Lacrosse. see. Lacrosse, soccer. Yeah. Some of those, kind of those sports there was are con- good. There was, you know, some uh, conflict because of the seasons, but I liked, I love sports. You must have been back east. I was back east, Syracuse. Oh, well, that's lacrosse. Mm. L- that's lacrosse heaven there, right? Listen, yeah, I don't want to make fun of lacrosse, but. You can make fun of it, especially girls lacrosse. There's so many regulations. Can we remove the lacrosse from the top 10 ESPN countdown top plays? Because the other night, it was either one or two, and it's the Duke lacrosse team guy, and he's standing three foot in front of the goal, and he just throws it, like, over his shoulder or something. It's like, it's three three foot away. It's a hard ball. Like, you're just not (laughs) – I get it, but it's not taking off from the free throw line and dunking. It's not running down a long fly ball in center field and, like, laying out. Like, first off, it happens so fast that I don't even know what happened. Just get it out of the sports center top ten. So we're not – con- lacrosse is no longer a sport. It's a just, sport, it's but it doesn't – It's a spectator sport. It doesn't, it doesn't it just, look like anything yeah. when they score from three feet in front of the goal. What I'm hearing is that sports and athleticism and athletics, there's a spectrum. There's, There's a, a spectrum, spectrum to sports. Yes. Well, you know, I, we were talking about this. I was curious because watching the NFL, the, the what's what was the game called? Taylor Swift's win last night. Mm-hmm. I was curious about what was the most dangerous sport. Like what sport causes the most injury? Mm-hmm. I assumed football. It's cycling. Yeah. Cycling. Well, cycling fucks, you, you know, you, you can go a million miles unscathed, but one bad one. One pebble. One bad one little, gonna take you like, down. One strong dung beetle crossing the road, and <laughs> mm. well, those bikes are made of like tin foil and dental floss. I feel like it needs some of the technology needs to be upgraded. Yeah, but now I feel bad making fun of all those people who wear like the thousand pounds of equipment and all the you know, accessories with cycling. Now I understand you have to wear all that stuff, or you're going to die on that little flimsy bike, the Schwinn or whatever it is. Well, I don't think it's the bike. I think it's you hitting the ground that. That so I'm the problem. Got well, it. I I'm think the I'm ground's the problem. the problem, or you hitting the ground. I don't think it's a fair. I, I, yeah. I don't think They're it's a mecha- hurt by the bike. It's not a mechanical <laughs> failure that's that's causing the injuries. It's hit, the, being hit by a truck. The tires are like this. The oh well, tires it are is like it is true. The ten speeds have very skinny ass. They're tires. so flimsy. And then the second sport was w- just working out at a gym. It wasn't even a real sport. That was the most dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's never any, you know, it's never anything good. Like, you always want, like, you know, you know what it is? It's when you think of, like, most dangerous animals and you think, oh, Bengal tiger. It's a hippopotamus. 
That's mm-hmm. the problem. I thought it was the, a spider. The hippos kill oh, it, more people than lions and bears. I like, thought combined. that that was debunked. I thought that they don't say that they that, that they're that. Oh, hippos are insanely dangerous, and they're fast too. They and are. They, they, I don't and like they how hate fast humans. they are. Yeah, like what you want, like you want, you go most. Human beings are, are killed. Like, what is the most dangerous animal? You want to hear piranha. Right. Because that's where you go, oh, yeah, right. piranha. You know, but you don't think hippo, but it is. Or alligator. Hippo. Alligator makes more sense. Moose yes. are dangerous, weirdly. Yes. Uh, Australian jellyfish. I don't know. Yeah, it's always, it's never what you're thinking. It's, it's never always what you the, the cyclist. Right. Yeah. Yeah, football, lots of injuries, but I, I don't know. I, I made it, you know, had injuries, but. It was worth it. That's what I would. That's definitely totally say. Worth it was worth it. it. Worth some of the laps in memory, but f- it's worth it. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, and you got something out of all the sports you played, right? I did. I, I you know, the team, the team aspect is mm-hmm. great. Being made uh, an example, I think, is important for people. Right. I yeah. don't know if the screaming and yelling uh, is something that's necessary, but I guess maybe it is. I I tend to. Um, I tend to find that all the yelling and screaming and um, being, you know, all the things that didn't work out in sports for me, which was, you know, I, I played seven years of Pop Warner football. We played two championship games, lost both championship games. And each championship game, I went in like, abundantly confident and just lost. And uh, there's actually, I don't know, Byron or, or Dawson can find it, but there is a picture of me in my little East Valley Trojans uniform. It's just my head just sitting there looking sad as shit that's in one of our computers somewhere when I'm nine. We just won every single game handily the entire season, <laughs> and we just won into the championship game. And I was processing it like a nine-year-old. I was right. just like, "We're gonna win. We'll just win every game. We'll yeah. just win this game, <laughs> and then that'll, else. Yeah. that'll be that. This is gonna be great." And uh, and we lost. And I I just couldn't like get my head around you it. You would be like one of those players who's just sitting on the bench as the other team's confetti is falling yes. on them. Just Yes. So there was <laughs> it's so sad. Crying. There was that. Yeah. They cr- oh my God. Th- there was there was that. And uh then the very last year I played, we had another championship game. We had beaten the best team in the league, the undefeated by far I mean we beat <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's me, age nine. You look pissed. You look, actually, you look a little, you look a melancholy. sad. melancholy. Yeah. You look sad. I was very sad. It was the end of the game. I played the whole stinking game. It was time we were losing. They're going to put the scrubs in to get like a couple of plays. They just put me on the sideline. And I just remember thinking, Jesus Christ, not. Everything is bad now. Oh, the home's bad. Right. The parents are bad. The school is bad. And now this. Yeah. This is the only thing I had. We're going. We're we're going undefeated. And I just sat there going, Jesus Christ. And then the last. <laughs> that's your origin story. Yeah, the kid next to you. That's my even origin more story angry. in my East Valley Trojans uniform with the coach Steen behind me. Although you can't read his whole. I got to show this to Eric Kramer. I remember, remember Coach <laughs> Steen. So then I make it. To my last year, and we beat this team called the uh, Chatsworth Chiefs pretty easily during the, the actual regular season. We beat them easily. There was only one team nobody could beat, and that was the North Valley Bears. No, North Valley Golden Bears. No one could beat them because they had... So many guys on their team that they had a North Valley Bear team, like a, a, a gold team and a silver team. Like they literally started a second team because <laughs> so many people would come out. Now, the silver team you could beat easily. Yeah, they're but the not, silver team. Not the gold team. The gold team you couldn't. <laughs> that was a farm team. Oh, we played these guys <laughs> and they were all had slippers. They wore slippers to the thing, kind of urbany. Oh, slippers yeah. they, like like a pre-show like kind comfort? of a cholo like kind of a like the badass. slides oh it's yeah. kind of nice it was kind of pre-slide okay. this was like a cholo slippers 
They were scary. <laughs> they did the they move with their thigh pads and they doom pop. Doom, doom, oh. pop, doom, no. pop, Gosh, doom, doom, no. pop. And they're all lined up, and they're all just going by, and they're going past us. And the guy's in the lead, he's going, they're going, doom, pop, doom, doom, pop, doom. On the thigh pads, your thigh pads no. are loud. They're hard, you know, <laughs> boom, like a pop. And then the guy's rippling. in the front. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's Haka. Is that what that Haka is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and then Jason Momoa was in front, you know, <laughs> the rock, in yeah. the rock. And so the they're Moana. going, they're all lined up. <laughs> They're like they're like five deep and like six wide. And they're just going right by our bench. Doom pa. Doom doom pa. They already and the won. Guys in the front. <laughs> they already won. The guys in the front. There's a lead guy and he's going they're going doom pa. And he goes, we don't want no black eyed peas. And they'll yell, hell no. And then he goes, we don't want no mustard greens. Hell no. Pick them all on this. Say what? Pick them all on that. Say what? I say, bear, bear, bear. They're all breaking it down in front of us. intimidating as hell. I'm scared shitless. <laughs> the whole team's scared. We got one yeah. black guy on our team and one fat Mexican. The rest is <laughs> white guys, you know. So we're just sitting there scared shitless. And they come to our, they come to the Sun Valley to play us. And they they beat up on us. Like, like the, the score was like seven to 21 or something. It wasn't really a blowout, but they beat us up. I beat us up. I got like concussed. I, the, the team got beat up by these guys. Physically. Physically. They fired out. Mm. They hit hard. They executed. Like they beat up on us. And um, so then it was our, our only loss, but nobody beat them. And then it gets to the playoffs. And we got we got one more game to win. And if we win that one game, we're going to play the Chatsworth Chiefs at the College of the Canyons for the Super Bowl. And no one's worried about the Chatsworth Chiefs because we already beat them. But we got the North Valley Golden Bears that are now 10-0. and 0, this is the real game. And nobody, no one's going to beat them. And it's like rainy and it's like we're all like hyped up and we're like dug in and everyone's talking to each other in the huddle. It's like, every, every fire out, fire out, one more, one more, one more. And we somehow grind these guys to a win, like 13 to seven or something. And I got knocked out <laughs> in the game and, and no one could believe that we beat them and we beat them. And we're all relieved and insane that this unbeatable team gets beaten. And then we got two weeks before the Super Bowl against the Chatsworth Chiefs. And no one's worried about them because we already got done beating them. They're not the North Valley Bears. And we go we go to the championship game and uh, they crush us. They kill us. They had some running back phenom who didn't make the weight in the first game we played, and now he made the weight, and oh, they wow. just handed it to him, and he was like a, a man playing with kids, and he just ran right over us, and they just destroyed us, <laughs> and that was the end of the that was the end of the Pop Warner football career. Don't you think thinking you could beat someone was the downfall of that game? You guys got a little cocky, a little Chatworth <sighs> Chiefs we, cockiness. We we did, we did. I I'm telling you, when you play football. Or any sport. But when you play football, you go, oh, these guys hit hard. These guys fire out fast. These guys are well coached, like discipline. And then other teams just aren't. Like you can tell immediately. Just a bunch of orphans. Just a little slower, a little less aggressive, a little easier. It's just going to be an easier day. And and that's who the chats were Chiefs were. And and I was like, I remember these guys. We got these guys. Nope. Destroyed. They beat the shit out of us. See, that builds resistance. You wouldn't be here today if you won that. You game. would not be That's here today right. at this special table, right? If it weren't for getting your ass kicked by the Chatworth Chiefs in the Valley of the San Fernando S- Valley Gods, whatever oh, the place was God. called. Oh God, that when I, when I was driving home from College of the Canyons, College of the Canyons in the ninth grade, or going into the ninth grade or whatever it was, I just remember ugh, it's all downhill. Was it because you were driving down a hill? We down a hill. Yeah, yeah it's it was a steep, steep, slope. steep I know that. I know yeah. that street. Not Cyclist a metaphor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You put mm-hmm. it in neutral. You got to go. Mm-hmm. Just have fun. Nah, that was it for me. That was all downhill from that point on. <laughs> no more. But not Eric Kramer. He went to the NFL. Well, he had a couple downhills, but he certainly he had some downhills. Sounds like he's come out on top. That's a wild that. story. It's crazy. I can't even imagine. That guy's got some willpower. Good for him. Oh, he's a good dude. Yeah. Um. All right. Shifting gears. Can I say this? 
I love a, a toothpick. Love I like them. I like a wooden toothpick. Absolutely. Who doesn't I, love slivers in their gums? I love a toothpick. I like to roll it around. Makes me look like I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. What are you doing with a toothpick? I have one tooth that has one thing that gets like a thing, like a little pocket or something in between gum. And if I ever eat like meat or beef, or I have to pick this thing out. But I like a toothpick. But then I realize the toothpicks at my house, they don't, it's not all one toothpick. This is a round toothpick I have. It's mm-hmm. wonderful. It's like pressurized, too. They make flat toothpicks. Yeah. I don't know who makes a flat toothpick. I don't know why we need a flat toothpick. I don't know why somebody said we need one. I don't know how much wood you're saving with a flat. A flat toothpick sucks and is fucking worthless. And I'm going right back to... Uh, Tomatoes. I ordered. Uh, I ordered a wedge salad, I and I tomatoes. got those little fucking with tomatoes. But it's the stupid the, little cupid round dumb little. Oh, you little don't like grape the grape ones tomatoes? Cut in half. No. Why? Because you can't get a good slice on the one side, right? You can't. Your fork doesn't penetrate the skin, so you got to like try and fuck I, around well, with it. Well, let's I mean, let's try to figure this out. And okay. then I I. I, I usually stand alone on, on almost all my stances, but. <laughs> I love a tomato, but the round little cherry or whatever they're calling them grape, now, cherry. grape, whatever, the skin is kind of hard, a yeah. little peeling. It's a little pussy inside, and it's missing the meat of the tomato. Right, And like it's chewy. It's like a little chewy. Okay. Would you ever want a hamburger with eight of these little <laughs> ones on it versus a wheel, like a beefsteak tomato? You know, that's a tough question because what if you get eight perfect little bites, then you have a little slice of tomato But they're in not bite? eight. They're not. They're chewy in their skin. Yeah, it is a dilemma. This is a huge issue. This is a polarizing I, I, issue. Listen, there's something going on where they're saving money because this is some <laughs> bullshit. Because I want, when I order a wedge salad, I want chopped up tomatoes on it. I want pieces of tomatoes. I don't want half miniature dwarf tomatoes that are chewy and weird and sour. Tomatoes look like something that was dissected. That's the, my problem with it. Like you were talking about the ooey, ooey mm-hmm. gooeyness. Mm-hmm. The inside of a tomato is always questionable. You don't like it on a burger? It, it, it's it's a texture for me. It looks uh, like something. It's a texture. It's a weird thing. And then those little seeds. So you don't want it on a burger or on a sandwich or anything? I don't want necessarily my burger to be oozing tomato guts. I feel like we, maybe we could scoop some of that out, kind of like when you have like a pumpkin or a squash. Yeah, Just scoop the, some of the, fun, the funk out. Kind of, yeah, there's some of that. But I mean, most people, or it works. It's not yeah, broken. Yeah, I mean, we can make it work. There's worst issues. I think the major issue you brought up before are those freaking square toothpicks. Flat, yeah. It, it doesn't, it's Worthless. like round, round hole, square peg. I, and also, you can't, you can't twirl them around. I tried it. I cranked on it pretty hard. Oh, no. I flipped myself over. Yeah. Just boom, like a handle. I just, my feet went flying over my head. <laughs> yeah. Landed was... on my back. I was like, I joke because I was used to the round ones and it wouldn't turn, you know? So it I, was like cran- a... <laughs> I cranked it hard. My feet came off the ground. It's hand of God. Yeah. yeah. Hand of God. Yeah. Check the ring doorbell. <laughs> I just boom. This f- f- ass over tea kettle. Yeah. You don't want to spin those. Suckers. Are we saving money I or think... is there a person that prefers those? I don't prefer them, but I, my guess is a couple things. One is they're not rolling off the table. Mm. That's a good. That's a good one. You have a they're, not they're not they're rolling. They're not rolling. rolling off the table. And also, I think you could fit more of them in a box. Sure can. Because there's yeah. less. Yeah, there's less uh, negative space in there. Rain Man from the left field with the <laughs> yes. shape of a toothpick. Yeah, but they're trying to save a, a penny. Mm-hmm. Every 70 units or something. I just, I, the round are so much. For someone who always says it's a toothpick, I'm surprised you don't just keep it in your mouth. It, it's a cool look. It's a cool look. It really uh, is. Uh, it's I like was, a Brad Pitt look. I was watching um, uh, inside the NFL, oh, not inside, uh, training, Hard Knocks training camp. There was a Rams DB who always had it. <laughs> and he got cut. Oh. So I stopped doing yeah. it after, after he sense. got cut. All right. Um, Let's see. I'm going to talk to uh, – all right. Well, I guess we should talk Super Bowl, even though it's a, a, a day late or two days late for uh, us. But still, that was a, still people that was a hell it. of a game. Really slow start. Boy, turned out to be start. an awesome game. Yeah. Turned into uh, maybe one of the best Super Bowls ever turned into. Um, Seventh so, longest <clears throat> NFL game ever. Second longest? so Seventh. long. Seventh. Seventh. Oh, yeah. I wanted to just keep going. Me too. But – so there's a lot, you know, controversy about OT and winning the call. 
which is interesting. Yeah, that was a weird choice that San Francisco <clears throat> chose to receive. What do you think about that? Um, it's weird because they defer in the Super Bowl quite often in the Super Bowl in general, if you win the toss. So conventional wisdom is you win the coin toss, you get the ball. I love that you know I needed that. I'm just... <laughs> I never you know. He that looked at great. me like, let me I tell. I never I'm know gonna... <laughs> what yeah. anyone's level is. Man show explain this right I, now. I needed it. <laughs> I don't know how much you know about football. You no, I appreciate the, bicycle the education. Killed the cyclist. Do you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Loxamana? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know a, a lot about football? I don't... And how I overcome that is I go, this is not good. I just yeah. yell that out a bunch. Like, this is not good. I cross my arms. <laughs> and well, I just, I'm like Steve Carell in Anchorman. I don't know what we're yelling about. <laughs> Conventional <laughs> wisdom is you always take the ball when you win the coin toss. But in recent years, they've said, you take the ball. We'll put our defense on the field. Okay. Now, I think some teams do it during the season, probably. But other teams started doing it during the Super Bowl because the nerves were so big that they didn't want their offense out there. They wanted their defense out hmm. there. So because defense, you can play on emotion. Offense, you make mistakes when the motion, when the adrenaline dump hits. You get offsides calls, procedure calls, quarterback. You know, more mistakes. Right. That makes sense. So and then you get the ball starting on the second half mm -hmm. too. So. You defer at the Super Bowl. Um, then they kind of stop doing that a little bit. But I would think – so here's the reason you defer on – if you win the toss on OT of the Super Bowl. You, you want to know what you need to do. The other team gets the ball first. Mm -hmm. And it used to be if they scored, they won. Then it was if they scored a touchdown, they won. And then – they now they realize the other team needs to get the ball back, right. even if you, you score a, a touchdown. Possession, yeah. But you need to know if the other team goes down and scores and kicks a field goal, then you don't have to go for it on fourth down per se. Right. Uh, it, or or and if but if they score a touchdown, then you do have to go for it on fourth down. You wouldn't kick a field goal like you get an extra down to play with, right? Which is like oh that make kind of advantage because you're you're planning for four downs you're not planning for three downs and and KC took a fourth down but they would have had to do that anyway because mm -hmm. they're field goal whatever right. but and then the other argument which I get is if KC got stopped and kicked the field goal then San Fran would get the ball and whatever they did if they now if they the kicked a wins. 60 yard field goal they win the game which seems like a a valid argument as well. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of deferring, seeing what they've done, and then you know what you have to do. You know you have to. You cannot kick a field goal even if it's fourth and fifteen. Wait, you, you, in your you new shouldn't range. even defer though. You should just say you want to kick, right? Because if you defer, they might just say, "Okay, we choose to kick." Oh, oh, oh! Sorry, I, I'm just saying defer. I guess okay. they say defer, but they mean not take the ball. They, right. they say snap back a lot, too. Snap back. You said mm -hmm. that a thousand times. The guy was <laughs> snapping the ball got, on the ground. You guys watched the Super Bowl together, right? Times. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He kept snapping the ball on the fucking ground. He said it every time, snap back. Snap back. <laughs> Look, I, you know what I said one million times? Every day when practice is done, snapper, center, go over there. Towel boy, ball boy, whoever, go. Don't, we're not going to have Mahomes waste his fucking time. He's going to go sit in a whirlpool. Go there and give me 100 clean ones. Mm -hmm. Stop having the guy pick the ball up off the ground. It's the Super Bowl. You're a professional. You're a professional. How dare Act you? like it. This, yeah, this is your life. This is your job. Ugh. Now, is the one thing I noticed, and I do understand and can appreciate, are the tears at the national anthem. Chris mm -hmm. Jones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's a lot of tears. So as that was nice. gentlemen... Where are other places that it's okay for you guys to cry? Because I realize the football field is a place that's sacred. Well, we saw Adam. A lot of tears. Where else Me. are other areas that you guys are crying? Because women would like to know. Where is this happening? Are you <laughs> well, crying in the wait, bathroom? Wait, is that, is that attractive to you? Is that what you're saying? I, I, it's, I understand it. You understand. I, that's a connect. rational tear. The you last time I cried was at a Rush concert. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. All right. Rush concert. Yeah, it's okay. Was, was it during um, Tom Sawyer? What song got you? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> okay. 
You don't remember? I remember which song, but no, it's just but that, watching those guys play. Oh, that was it. The nice oh, of Neil it wasn't even a song. I can it was see just that. Seeing them play. Yeah. Concerts make you cry. Yeah, that's fair. I've cried at concerts. I can see that. I did that. I've at the at, concert, uh, sure. was at the country bear jamboree. You, you guys, the way those guys could handle their instruments. <laughs> I was young. Yeah, you I ever cried on a plane? Off that loss. Play? You ever cry on a plane? That's people tough. People cry on planes. That's a tough because you're to watching cry. a sad movie. Sad movie, but like I guess it's enhanced because of like the oxygen or something. Or I don't, I don't know what it is. I think there's something physically going on with your body that you cry easier. I think you're just sadder hmm. on planes, Lachlan. Okay, I cry yeah. on a plane. And I just need to justify you. it. Yeah, my knees are asleep. <laughs> What's happened to my career? I should be in first class. This is bullshit. It's I just got recognized for a third time. You yep. know what the biggest scandal of the straight Super Bowl pretzels, was? no lemons. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, whatever Blake Lively was wearing. I know you guys don't pay attention to this stuff. I did. Yeah. So, uh, that was like... Like that red tracksuit, that Adidas tracksuit. She looked like LL Cool J. She looked like a girl from a rap video. She did. And I thought, like, this is Taylor's moment. Yeah. Of anybody in that box. And it felt like she was trying to, like, steal some of that I didn't think so. I thought fire. she looked like a backup dancer, like a J-Lo backup dancer. Right, but why dancer. is she dressing like a backup dancer? Was her because hair? Look at this outfit. Is her hair? I mean, her this looks like a costume. Big. It was big. This looks like I'm going to tell everybody this is the Spice Girls. That's what I'm going to tell everybody. This is. I'm going to tell I my don't kids. know how much coordination. Well, ice spice. I don't know how much coordination there is going on, but everyone is dressed in black, and then she's in red, which obviously just pulls focus. I don't know about the big Sarah Jessica Parker uh, hair. It's too it's, much hair. Well, it just is all too much because it feels like a lot of attention. That's an attention grabbing color. Her man's not on the team. That's She's right. wearing the color of the team. So I don't I think Taylor needs to like reconsider if this girl's really a best friend or She's a focus puller. A yeah. focus puller. That's what's yeah. going on. She'll she'll pull focus. I mean, she's gorgeous. It's it's a fun outfit, but I mean more for like a Gwen Stefani music video yeah. or something. Yeah, I agree. That's a scandal. We need to know. Do they know what they're wearing in advance? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Are you kidding they me? They do. Yeah. I don't know. People say that all the time. Are you kidding me? I don't know. I don't know. I've never exchanged Especially if you're going to be notions. next to Taylor Swift. That's so, what I'm saying. So she did Taylor this. have to prove it? That's a great question. Well, she knew in advance. I, she didn't say anything. Here's the other question. If she didn't know, as as a guy, you, you guys probably don't care. But if she didn't know and then you see your best friend supposedly show up like that, I'd be like, Ex what are you doing? Hello? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to do? First of all, your husband, you guys are fine. Why are you trying to attract yourself, make yourself more attractive? Mm -hmm. Why is your hair blown out? Too much hair. Too much hair for, the, much for, hair. The, for a football game. And he, yeah. look at Taylor's just chilling in her, I don't know what's going on in the jeans. There's a little slit down there. I don't know if there's like maybe some snacks in there. Yeah. That would yeah. make sense. Oh, here's another question I have. Do they have snacks on the sidelines? Uh, some guys request certain things. I would think like they would Marshawn need Marshawn Lynch liked his, uh, you know, really? I don't, I don't no? Oh, he, he was Skittles. Oh. Uh, uh, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. Chris, here's my relationship with Chris. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that, yeah. Your, that is is that your noise? If, that's, I, that's if I ever give you the noise where you should know, you should know. You've seen him with the Skittles. Faking. He's sucking on the Skittles all the time. Some guys have their own sideline thing. But in general... Nah, you don't see it that much. And here, here's a question. Do you think players would rather make it to the Super Bowl on a team and be benched and not play? Or would they rather play a lower level game or tournament or whatever? Like, do you think like being on this, being at the Super Bowl game, but not playing in it is enough? They, yeah, no, it'd be enough for me. I, they I, want I, that I ring. Sure. They want the ring. Mm. Yeah. I would say. Fair. The association. The, um, what do you think? Um, what do you think of that whole Kelsey Andy Reid interaction when they were fighting? Yeah, when, when I was like, "Oh, boys get into fights too. This is cute. Why? What was that all about?" It was, um, it was just he, these guys are very. These guys are like fighting dogs, mm -hmm. you know, who are like amped up. Like if you ever see a dog that's like totally amped up. And fighting, mm -hmm. fighting dog, and then its owner like tries to pull it off. It'll bite its owner. But that too. seems unacceptable. It gets, it gets Aren't there regulations up. in this sport? I, that's the, that is the coach. I was there. Was I a, know, I know. But what I'm saying is, is you go, okay. The athletes used to be sort of regular people, not <laughs> not beaked up, not nutty 
fighting machines. Nordic like machines. Crazy, They're crazy. Insane. Yeah, not all Nordic, but some from other villages. But, yeah, a lot of villages. But, giant but people. The, but the point is, is they weren't the crazy machines that they are now. And and then so you watch these games, and it's like it's like the Super Bowl, and you know there's two minutes left, and they got a score, and the team's driving, and the crazy wide receiver gets shoved after the play, and he turns around and takes a swing. At the other guy. And then the announcers are always like, what is he doing at this critical part of the game? What's he? Oh, he just got a 15-yard penalty. He said, you got to get your head in, son. You can't do that. The crazy face mask where he's like pulling the guy's all head off with the face mask. And 15 yards, now they're in field goal range. And you go, what are you doing? They didn't really do a lot of that back in the day, but they weren't all beaked up crazy fighting dogs like they are now. You know what I mean? Like there's more crazy mental errors now but it's it's the the crazy mental error is there there's so much emotion there's such great athletes that's why they're taking a swing at the guy or headbutting their own coach or pushing the ref or doing something like that at these like critical times because you've traded some of the crazy athletic you've you got all the crazy athletics but you 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 You've kind of the sensible mind has gone mm. out the window. These guys are fighting dogs. And so they do stuff where you just go, what is he doing? What is he <laughs> doing? Well, Charlie Waters, defensive back for the uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, wouldn't have done that in 1974. But Charlie Waters was 180 pounds. White guy with a 30-inch vertical leap and ran a 4 eight forty. Do you know what I'm saying? They were like regular dudes. They weren't high-strung, whipped-up machines. So you're going to see that now. It's a little uh, Frankenstein in the monster vibe. And it also feels yeah. like, doesn't this, <laughs> don't you think, and this is me asking completely from a naive perspective, somewhat, don't you think that this sort of also condones that behavior in other areas of life? Because so much of football, sports, music, whatever it is, it's idolized. It's these guys are like icons to a lot of people. People are obsessed. They have the jerseys in their house. They wear the jerseys to the game. They talk about the game like they're in it. These men represent a lot of people's feeling about what they wish they could be. There's a responsibility that comes with that. So when a player like this, this is this is Taylor's man, right? Yeah. So not only is he the, the center, guy on the right, the guy on the left, the head. <laughs> oh, I was I was worried about. It. I was I, like, wow, Taylor really that. changed. Changed yeah. her vibe. Mm -hmm. It just feels like, you know, this guy's already got a lot of eyes on him. Ne it feels like the NFL has shifted because of this relationship. It feels like it feels like there's a shift in the NFL universe. Yeah. So it also feels a little. I, I know it's probably in, like you said in the middle of the game. They're all juiced up. He's jacked up. He's coming over. He's heated. I get that. But it also feels like it could be like he feels he feels like he's having a moment and can get away with a little bit more. Mm. In. Is they like say showboating? they have a history. They have a history of this stuff. That's like these what two I heard. specifically? Yeah, these two, they have a history of this. Mm. That's, so what, a they, bit of that's like a, what they say. A tug and pull of a relationship. That's a different thing. I can understand that. I just, I wonder about him and the Taylor thing. And also, does this affect, do you think this bleeds out into society a little bit? This more, uh, Society's a little bit more already violence. Lost. <laughs> Every time I lift my phone it's more footage of some student beating the shit out of their teacher so i think we're already there <laughs> that's true that the class was probably more dangerous than the is, football field this is the least of our worries <laughs> all right um what about the um oh so let me just yeah. give some some more stats here so post malone did america the beautiful i didn't like his grill it was distracting he, wasn't it he called it sterling yes. silver <laughs> that's from jaws that's from um james bond you said, Weird. why does Post Malone have sterling silver teeth? <laughs> I, he does. I, I don't know what the deal is. You, you play a little bit. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. Also, maybe he needs a pen and paper. Yeah. Because it looks like he's a lot of notes. <laughs> play in a terminal of an airport. Yes, absolutely. And, I, and those people are, you know, everyone ha deserves <laughs> to follow their dreams. But this, it, like when I think of the national anthem, I think of epic an epic moment in in sports history, like that's a that's a really well. This is not that. This is not that. I but, agree. But but uh, no, I mean this isn't the national anthem. So no, no, I know not the national anthem. But when songs like this are yes. sung at sporting events, these like 
important songs, it, it feels like it should be something that's a little bit more iconic. I, I'm just going to go wildly overrated, and I'm not sure what the fuck. I mean, I get he can rap and sort of sing <laughs> yes. and sort of play the guitar, but not really. Also but super likable. I know he's Everyone. super likable. I get, I, get, I get that part, but I, I don't know why we need to see him in this position mm. at all. Also, a, a questionable outfit. If it, it, it's, it feels very like Manson. It's like a, it's like a Manson musician. He's got a bolo tie on, but it's inside the collar. It's around his neck. So yeah, that's just an, that's an accident waiting to happen. Right. It's, and it's an not, ill place. It's not holding your yeah. collar in any position. And then uh, Reba sang mm-hmm. the national anthem. Yeah, that's hit, right. Reba sang the national anthem. Hit the over. Oh, she hit the and over. And the reason was because she she added her own little ending. If she didn't um, add this ending, oh. she would have hit the over. But let's watch it. All right. That's... I don't know. I think they both got the gig because of their name, Reba and Post. <laughs> if his name was Eric, we wouldn't give two fucks about what he did. <laughs> and if her name was Shelly, no one would care about yeah. her. I think we, we like saying Post Malone. We got Post Malone and we got Reba. The, uh, no one wants to say we got Eric Malone. They're gonna be like that guy can't sing. That's my lawyer. Yeah. That'd be it. I right? That guy yeah. does my I wouldn't pick taxes. Him. Yeah. The uh, the Juwan Jennings pass to McCaffrey for the touchdown. Oh yeah. Right after it happened, they're like Juwan Jennings, the quarterback of his high school, and it just further showed like yeah, these guys were all quarterbacks. Yes. Before and then you know obviously he's a. They're the best athletes on their team. Yeah, they're the best athletes on their in team. high school. Yeah. So yeah, that, I mean, what do you think of the halftime show? Uh, sure. I liked them roller skating. Roller that was, skating that was, was pretty fun. cool. There's um, a wardrobe malfunction. A little bit of a wardrobe malfunction. That was fine. Double standard, but we're cool. I do realize <laughs> like we are such a weird society. So it's like it, it's like if you sat down at the the piano and went dunk 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 with dunk 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 which any 9-year-old could do pretty much if you Worked on the piano for four months, and then he turns that just that bum 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 See, that's into the this like he made two hundred million dollars off of that dunk 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 dunk. That's I I don't know how good I mean I like him roller skating. He dances. I don't know that he has tons of relevant hints, but he has at least that uh, one. Oh, and I don't sure? know what else. I disagree. Oh my gosh, what well, how many he's, hints? He's probably not your specific wheelhouse of music absolutely but not he's i mean multi-platinum no but the guy there's some hits th- that there's, didn't pl- play that there's plenty of people where their stuff breaks through right enough where you know about them anyway i know that dun 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 i mean i was listening to it was fine it's fine i like to roll i like to roll john to get you dun, pumped dun, up dun, 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 turn down for dun, what dun, Dun dun. Yeah. Um, yeah, ton of energy in it. Uh, what I noticed in Dawson may have noticed this too. He was really singing. Yes, he yes, he was. One hundred percent singing. Yeah, he was singing. Over a track. Over like a track. They all do. Yeah. Every single one of them does. But it wasn't, he still was singing. It was his vo- his his real vocals. Like he was out of breath. He was very sweaty. A lot tell. of people mm-hmm. commented on how sweaty yeah, he, he was. was sweatier yeah. than the athletes. Yeah, Alicia Keys looked great. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was that was really good. Um but yeah, really singing the, the so everyone was kind of complaining about the mix. They fixed it in post, and if you watch it on YouTube, it's a much better mix. And so, oh, really? And Alicia yeah, didn't his, get that sour his, note at the top either. His vocals weren't hot enough, right? They weren't. They were, they they were. were buried. They were yeah. buried in the real broadcast, but they fixed it in post. So well, um, yeah, I recognize a lot of those. I wonder if post uh, Malone worked on the post. <laughs> he <laughs> yes, did. That's where he got his name from. Maybe that is his real talent. Post that's probably work. Why, yeah. Mm-hmm. When he gets older, will he call himself Past Malone? Past, post, present. Yeah. Yeah. Ludo. <laughs> present Malone. Your boy yeah. Ludo. Was Luda from uh, Fast and Furious. Yeah. yeah, with a blowout, he had a fresh he blowout. Did. That was he fluffy. Did. His hair yeah. looked glorious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, like, it was fun. I mean, it was it was, was kind of like I think for a lot a lot of people a little reminiscent. You know, it rep- represents like an era, like the '90s, 2000 hip hop, mm-hmm. like that fun time. The yeah. roller skating thing was such a trend, and it's kind of made its own little resurgence. If he would have ate shit. Like Roller it would have been over, yeah, and yeah. it's so risky. Like, and he I slid under the guy's legs and everything too. Well, he roller skates in his Vegas residency. Oh. It felt like a mini Vegas. Know that. He How did you know that? What do you know? Because I watch extra, extra. Because <laughs> he knows. Dun, dun. 
dun, 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 he went to the show just dun, for that dun, song. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, he roller skates in his show. Uh, That's why, because he wouldn't have just pulled out. He wouldn't have dusted <laughs> off the skates after 20 years and done it at the Super Bowl if he wasn't doing it every day exactly. in his residency. All yeah, right. he brought like, every, he's like, let's just bring the Vegas show smaller to mm-hmm. the stadium. Yeah. Well, here's my question. I know traditionally these performers, they don't get paid for this halftime show, correct? They pay to do it. Like mm-hmm. their labels pay them, pay the, the Super Bowl to perform. And are, do we know the metrics afterwards? Like, what's the re, what's the ROI on a, a performer performing in the halftime show? Is it? It must be worth it if these. Well, he's going are on like it. a worldwide tour right after this, and uh, yeah. Well, look, I Lil mean, the, 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 album. the return on investment is if thirty seconds is seven million bucks, then one minute is fourteen million bucks, then seven, you know, then. 10 minutes is $140,000 and 15 minutes is 140 plus seven. So it's, it's $210 million worth of advertising in theoretic, in theory that he gets when he does this, Mm -hmm. because if you're Pepsi and you want one minute, that's 14 mil. So, um, I think it was 7 million for 30 seconds. So he takes 15 Extrapolate that he's got over two million dollars worth of free advertising. I think it's worth it. I got it's in the wrong it. business. What mm-hmm. about um, the commercials? Any commercials that caught your eye? Uh, I've, I've, the Jesus one kept popping up. A lot of yeah, religious well, commercials. Yeah. I, I think it's a bad sign when Jesus yeah. needs marketing. You guys yeah. joined a church. I joined a church. They kept the doing Super the Bowl. thing with the Jesus thing. He washed feet. You know why? Because they didn't have shoes. Yeah. He didn't want you walking <laughs> through his house. After you've been tracking through the mud, he's going to wash your feet. Yeah, he had sacred sandals. They mm. didn't have Those are all AI roller skates images back too, then. Which is weird. And then there's that weird commercial for whatever cheap shopping thing. Timu. 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 And I was it's like, like yeah. this is something weird. Out of, this is Chinese. Buy a bunch of something. Chinese fucking it's crap. Chinese. Yeah. It's Chinese. Yeah. Like yeah. Exactly. New, you could get four. a whole outfit for $6. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, an entire wardrobe. You could decorate your whole house for $47.53. <laughs> I know because after that commercial, I went and put a bunch yeah. of stuff. Yeah. I, I, I just kept looking at it going, this is Chinese, right? Like it something's is. off. Like when you see Caillou and you go, this is American. <laughs> this is fucked up. <laughs> and it's some Cana- French Canadian shit. Like, it feels like when you're traveling out of the country and you're watching the TV in that country, like it felt like one of those commercials or like like in asia when they have cookies <laughs> and it's just weird it's like a mango is on the thing yeah, and you're like what is that red this is a mango cookie like it's all it's just a little off right your you know brain I mean? can't compute it there yeah was that um the scientology right there was a scientology there was. commercial oh there Mark was Wahlberg yes. had a jesus or christian app commercial wow but yeah he did taking a piss for that one <laughs> Yeah, I didn't yeah. See that so, one. I mean, yeah, there's some. There are definitely some. A lot more religious commercials. Not a lot of like beer commercials. No. What the happened commercial to that America? Split the room at my house was the uh, Ben Affleck uh, Dunkin' the Donuts. That was the best. I one. I thought it was hilarious. That was I thought the best that one. was that awesome. Was yeah. Some people were saying, "Do these guys need more attention?" I'm like, "That's not the point." Yeah, people listen. People do this with commercials. Does he need more money? Does yeah. he need, you know, that's what my mom, my mom would be like, do someone, why does someone need two pairs of shoes? You have a <laughs> pair of shoes. What do you need? A second car? What is it? Like everything was like, why do you need two bathrooms in a house? Like, yeah, okay, I get it. But some people want stuff. Everybody like wants money. stuff. Not my mom, but, uh, <laughs> well, no, she wanted stuff too, but she didn't want to admit it, so she would just make exactly. fun of people. With, you with two frying pans. Oh, look at you, la di da Like, everything was like, you need this. But right. yeah, the, 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 I've said it a million times. Nobody need no, no, he does not need more money. Uh, it's never about more money. It's... I will give you seven million dollars or ten million dollars for half a day's work. Will you do it? And the answer is always yes, no matter how much money you have, because someone's just offered you five million dollars for four hours work, and it's in town with and your best friend. With your best friend, and you just go, "I'll do it." It doesn't matter whether you need it; you just do it because everyone comes from a place. I mean, most everyone. Everyone has a memory of some neighbor going, 
I'll give you $12 if you shovel my whole driveway, you know, and I'll give you $14 if you wax my car for me, or like, I'll give you $20 if you mow my lawn and then take all the clippings that, you know, every, every young man or every man has thoughts about, you know, I got $2 and 43 cents an hour working for McDonald's, you know, when I was young. I remember lots of times like someone going, I, I babysat for a dollar an hour, you know? So you can't tell me, I'll give you 80 grand to do the asphalt convention in Orlando and have me go, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna be shoveling a driveway. Like you have these m- memories of working for nothing, working a whole day, getting getting $40 for the whole day or something. All of a sudden someone goes, you get $7 million for a day. And they go, I'll take it. And then we go, oh, you don't have enough money with that? It's not, not, no, no, it's not that. It's the memory right. of what you would used to do for nothing. I'm more concerned about the person that trusted you with their children. Oh, are, are they okay? My neighbor. Well, it was my neighbor. <laughs> and it was also uh, Reevee and Ronnie, the Israeli kids <laughs> who lived uh, like on the other street. Yeah. That's Buck wild that you babysat. That could, be a, that could be like a moonlighting career for you. I didn't have to do anything. The kids were always pretty much asleep when I showed up, and I would just sit there and watch TV and eat. And at Reeve and Ronnie's place, look for the dad had a Playboy. Oh, yeah. You, you, oh, babysitters are always snooping around. Always snooping <laughs> for the Playboy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Found the Wahlberg. There's a Scientology commercial. Yeah, there's, Scientology commercial. There there's was, a there's a RFK commercial. That I remember. Me- the retro. Yeah. Vintage. A, yeah, that was a cool. Commercial. That was a cool commercial. Felt a little felt a little creepy. If I'm gonna be honest. That's an actual commercial from 1960. Yeah, it felt like a subliminal message, and I think I, I think it worked. The uh, which one? Sorry, RFK. <laughs> the Kennedy. The Kennedy. Yeah. Commercial. He did tweet out like, "I'm sorry if the Super Bowl advertisement caused anyone in my family pain." The ad was created and aired by the American Values Super PAC without any involvement or approval from my campaign. Whoa. Yeah, I was, it was from 1960. It was an actual thing that they imposed him into. It felt like something that played in that movie uh, Insidious or like The Conjuring. What was that movie with Ethan Hawke and the k- creepy kids? Do you remember that movie? It's like Sinister. There's yeah, like, there's I mean, there's oh, like 80 the of those movies. That's why I can never, not the phone one. Okay. No, but there's like, you know, there's always like a creepy movie playing on the TV when you yes. walk into the haunted house. That's what that commercial kind of, it gave me creepy vibes. <laughs> all just that, yeah, that old audio. Yeah, it felt like yeah. a haunted political right. era. Uh, all right, let's take a break. Let's do, let's get some news in. Sure. Why don't we do that? We'll take a break, come back with Jesse May. We'll do the news right after this. Stamps.com. After the hype of New Year's, it's time to settle into routine. Stamps.com streamlines all of your mailing and shipping like uh, a post office right in your pocket. Postage rates just increased again. Stamps.com has the best discounts, like 89% off of postal service and UPS. We've used these guys for over a decade. The scales in the back, we never overpay. We weigh everything. We get the discounts, we mail and ship. And by the way, you speed your business up when you do it from your own business at stamps.com. Use the promo code Adam for a four week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com. Click the microphone at the top of the homepage and enter Adam. That is stamps.com. Click the microphone at the top of the homepage and enter Adam. As we venture into our 15th year of podcasting, here's another memorable moment from the Adam Carolla Show's Ace Awards archives. And I yeah. just wanted to remind you, I don't know if you got my text message at 2 a.m. Where, where I text the uh, whole blockchain. I didn't, I didn't get it till the morning. But well, yeah. I did text everybody and it makes it easier for you oh, to respond about right. the, 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 the trash the trash cans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you do know. So you might, might have seen the text. I'll shut the lids. Yeah, I'll shut it. There's there's just raccoons and cats and opossums. Yeah. There's a lot of creatures. Every time now I shut it. There's a lot of diseases. There's that lepto disease going around. And I just don't want to have to like send you a bill for that. Yeah, I'll so, shut know, the they, lid. But the cats are an issue and also the, the raccoons. So you Correct. really need to just... Check the email and the text message. It has all message the information. Sign. But if you could just shut the lid yeah, of the trash you. can and not keep it open, that'd be great. Yeah, I got you. Opossums carry a lot of diseases. Yeah, I, <laughs> Do you want to come over later? <laughs> yeah, but I'm bringing the app. <laughs> 
Now for some new memorable moments, let's get back to the Adam Carolla show. Yeah, that was my app to have the ranchera music start to oh, creep up great. when people got to redundant. That's right, the ranchero music. What a creative you're a creative fella. I am. You, I you wish. might have a, a future in the arts. Just a thought. Just put it out there. Stir it in your soup. Can you guys help me with why it bothers me so much when people tell me the same thing again, like in the, or a super obvious thing in a conversation. Like what? Like I was, um, I was, uh, I, my, my pool is drained as you know, Mm -hmm. you saw my empty pool, a pipe burst and the pool just started draining. And, uh, then I woke up one day a few a week ago when it was down like a foot, so I I knew it was it was down, and then um, there's been this stuff on the side of the pool on the coping like scaling like something's been building up on it and I've been wanting to have at it for a long time but I can't do it with a full pool so I don't know how that would work so as the pipe was broke and the pool was draining I thought good I'll drain the pool. I'll get at this weird scaling that's been up at the coping for a long time, driving me nuts for years. And I'll like pressure wash and acid wash the pool and then I'll refill it because it needs to be done anyway. So this burst pool pipe is a good thing. So the pool was draining, but then it stopped and it had like another three or four feet on the deep end where it all built up. So uh, Roberto, my guy, got my sump pump which I've done before, and you just lower it down into the deep end, and then you take a garden hose and you hang it out, and then it slowly drains the rest with an electrical cord. And so I called uh, Olga, the nanny, who was there. I wasn't there. I was in Malibu. And uh, she said, um, Roberto has uh, put the thing in the thing to drain the pool. And I said, uh, good. Uh, how long? And but the whole idea is when the pool gets dry, when it's all pumped out, you'll burn the pump out because it won't shut itself. It'll keep going dry. Mm-hmm. So right before you got to keep an eye on it. When it gets way right down to the bottom, you got to unplug the shit. Otherwise, you'll burn out the sump pump. Right. So I called her because I knew it probably had a half a day or something, and I said. Um, I'm going to be back at like two. The pump's still in the pool. How high is the water? Because I want to I, I, I want to make sure I'm back so I can unplug it before it burns out. So Roberto's put the pump in the pool. How high is the water? And then she said, <laughs> Roberto put the pump in the pool to get the water out of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and I all, I all I can ever do is just go, I understand. Now, <laughs> now maybe there's a language thing, but people do this maybe. to me all the time. And it's like, I, I, I know there's a, some bump in the pool. The pool's li- thing's going down. I understand. I also understand the part where you told me you needed me to unplug it before it got burnt out. So you don't want it to go at four in the morning when you're asleep. You got to unplug it before you go to bed or whatever. But I have that a lot in life and it drives me nuts, but I don't know why it drives me nuts because everyone else seems to be fine with it, is what I'm saying. <laughs> maybe it drives you nuts because you just want the clear communication. You want the thing done. And maybe that miscommunication gets in the way of the I do, process. but this happens to everybody all day and nobody goes nuts. Like I go, I just, it bothers the shit out of me. I don't, yeah. I don't get it. Well, like did I'm, you know that they put the sump pump in there to get the water out? Right. <laughs> that's, that's my, <laughs> and also people give answers like just in, insane like 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 it, it, like here's how a lot of people do like if you are holding a fork in your hand at a restaurant and you saw a tarantula walk across your plate and you said to someone oh my god what is this they go that's a fork and you go yeah i'm not no i'm not I'm pointing at the tarantula oh i thought you were talking about the fork you're holding the fork it's like Yes, you think I was asking what a fork was. And they will do that. They'll do that all fucking day, every yeah. day, which is insane to me. <laughs> it's insane. Just take a beat. Take a beat. Right? Take a beat, assess the situation, then respond. Right. We should right. break for a commercial for edibles. <laughs> <laughs> Having the calming effect when people drive you nuts. <laughs> yeah, or sometimes they'll just do, I don't know, it's kind of, I mean, you know what, it's probably my mom. It's like when my mom... 
yes. asked me, she goes, do you know who John Stewart is? Like, yes. Yes. We're on the same network, mom. <laughs> I've heard of him. He's a good, yeah. was he an open micer, up and coming kind of guy? <laughs> yes. I know who John, do you know who John Stewart is, mom? Yes. Then I know because you don't know anything and I know everything. So of course I know who John Stewart is. I don't like it. It's a pet peeve. It's a peeve. I get it. It's, it's, it's not even just, pet. It's a peeve. I like it's a, a pet. peeve for you. It's just a peeve. <laughs> My pet, I like. It's a peeve for you when your cleaning lady can't communicate. With it's a peeve. It's, it's not a pet. It's such a personal pet. problem. It is it's so funny. You're like this. Really pisses me off. No, but when, uh, also <laughs> I don't like when people shift gears when <laughs> when you're talking about like if if you like you'll say to somebody like you'll go. Uh, you go, all right, we got to take the dog, Phil. We got to take the dog, Phil, to the groomer. And then Sonny's going snowboarding. And you go, all right, so uh, how do you want to do this? And they go, they, they'll they superimpose it or they'll say, oh, you mean the dog's going snowboarding or something like that? And I'll go, no. And they'll go, well, that's what you said or something. It's just it's bad <laughs> communication mm-hmm. all the way around. People need to focus. Well, yes. That's what I it agree is. with that. I agree with that. I think, yeah, a lot of people just lost the ability to talk. I, I, I think what it is is people buy themselves time to think by saying super obvious things, which then buys them a couple of seconds to come up with something. But we're okay with the silence. It's I got, like you the gotta silence. be okay with the silence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Give us the silence and then respond correctly. That's all we ask. Yeah. That always happens with my nanny. <laughs> I'll say to her, when are you going to be home? And she'll go, I just left the Target. And I'll go, <laughs> I honestly when think that's... <laughs> are you going to be home? I don't know where the Target is. I feel like that's, and I speak this heterosexually, the male-female disconnect. Mm-hmm. I really think that's a consistent issue. And, and my, my sister does this thing too, and I think I do it sometimes, where you think it, and then you think because you think it, the person heard you. Mm-hmm. Oh, Chris has that. I know a male yeah. who does that. Yeah, yeah. a lot of ma- that's is it male, a male thing? Uh, it's a well, it's it, it <laughs> maybe was it's tra- my testosterone. No, it, it's speaking. traditionally <laughs> a female thing. Yeah, I think but so it too. is bled into the male space. Also, like Laksamana kind of <laughs> he pointed right at he actually yeah, he really gestured towards you. The <laughs> Males think did that you way just now brush too. my hair? Mm-hmm. He totally just did a brush stroke over <laughs> your face. But maybe we're speaking the way we scroll. That's what I'm thinking. That's what you kind of touched I, on. I think there's two things. There's there's I there's two categories. There's I thought I told you this, and then there's another more insidious category, which is I wish I told you this, but I will say I thought I told you this. You know, there's a lot male this male and female thing happen all the time where you go, like, oh, how come okay, here's the male female argument of all time. You know, it's like it's like sort of knock, knock, knock on the door, and then you answer the door, and you go, who's here? And they go, I'm here to do, to measure the curtains or whatever. And then you say to your woman, you go, I, you're in your bathrobe, and you go, you didn't tell me we're going to have the, can- I told you, I told you, we were, I told you 9 a.m. Monday, the curtain measurer guy was coming in. It's like, well, then why am I in my bathrobe and have a boner, and I just have, open the door, and I'm surprised. And they like, oh, I told you. I told you. Now, that's a combination of, I think I told you, but I wish I told you. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Big, like I wish, I wish I told you. But now with the boner, you have an extra place to hang the curtains. That's right. That's the a rod. solution. Sample, yeah. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Well, speaking of rods, so there's a, a transgender woman who was suing her ex boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, because one, the ex boyfriend. So she had. Uh, she's a, what Adam calls post op. Mm-hmm. Right. right, so she had her balls removed. Good for her. Post op should have sung "America the Beautiful." <laughs> Would have done a much better job than Malone. That was a, that was a post op. I, I hope he a, has a trans sister they called Post Op. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good um, call back. <laughs> so, so the uh, this woman, this transgender woman, she um, she claims that this guy was keeping her balls. From her, right? She moves out, and her, she's like, my the, my ex boyfriend still has my balls. He won't give them back to me. They're in the fridge. They're Every next to the woman eggs. I've ever been with has had my balls somewhere. I know. They're in it because she kept them in a mason, mason jar in the fridge next to a carton of eggs. Really? Yes. Is that where you should keep the balls? I thought it was in the the crisper. 
Yeah. Yeah. You should. I There's humidity the, control. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you have to keep it separate from the fruits that emit ethyl and that all those sense. other gases. Yeah, they, plus they absorb mm-hmm. all the other flavors. Yeah, of the you don't want the that. Fridge. The banana goes in the bowl. Everything tastes mm-hmm. like bananas. You have right. to really mm. consider this. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the banana and the nuts. So, <laughs> so first she sues this guy because uh, he's not giving her balls back, and then the guy's like. Whoa, I threw your balls away. Stop trying to sue me. And he's like, well, now I'm going to sue you for throwing my balls away. Shouldn't we sue the doctor that let her go home with the balls? I feel like that's hazardous. When anything's chopped off of you, do you, you get to keep it? It's your property, I assume. You no. I thought no. It's ha- that's a hazardous bag. <laughs> no, if your arm has gangrene and they have to amputate it, you don't get to bring it home right. with you. I had a cool tooth that they pulled out of my head once. It looked like the thing from Jurassic Park on... John Hammond's cane. Oh yeah, they didn't let me take that home. Hmm. I feel like yeah, that's a much it's, it's lesser like it's issue. like medical waste or something. Right. I'm surprised. But what country was this in? That's a good question. Because this could be a country. This could be something other than this country. Feels Canada. Feels Canadian. Fe- feels to Canada. Me too. Detroit. Detroit. <gasps> Next to Canada. Very close. Very, very basically close. Canada. Canada. What if she went across the border to get the sack cut off? And listen, I look, I don't want to be a douche, but we have terms pre op, post op, transsexual, transvestite, cross dresser. We used to use it so we knew what the fuck was going on. And now it's just like, well, this transsexual woman walked in and I'm like, was it a woman? Well, it was a woman. Yeah, it was a trans. Is it cock and balls? Oh, I don't know about that. It's like, well, that's why we have pre op, post op. So we all just that. want to understand. Let when us know understand. what's going on. Yeah. What was well, she going to do with the balls? Did she, she say? No, she just wanted them back. And then the boy, the ex-boyfriend's like, you know, I'm going to sue you because you're humiliating me. This is becoming a story. So they, so he counters. He's, the judge just throws it all out. The Good. Judge, the judge says. Because she, she wanted the, to, the return of her testes and an extra $6,500 in damages. Did, did she testify that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. What it's, are we going to do? Hit the moil up for the foreskin now? Well, I love the like, judge did the same thing with the case that the boyfriend did with the balls. Throw it out. Throw it out. Yeah, this... Ugh. It's a it's a, it's a sticky subject. It is. I'm just curious what she was going to do with them after. Is it like buyer's remorse? Like, do you hang on to them? Because well, is there like the a... Sen- there's got to be a sentimental... Those are your... I, Those are your gonads. You gotta, yeah. You have to like wean. It's off. gotta be hard to like just throw that away. My tooth, sure, but I, I, now I get it. It's like maybe more emotional. There's an mm-hmm. attachment to I that. I sort of get the terrorists now, like what they think of us. Like <laughs> I do infidels too. need to all burn. Like why? We're arguing over nuts. Not that we bad. Post Malone sing that. But you're bringing yeah. people joy. This is a break for people. Right. Ugh. You're well, doing a service, you. Adam Carolla. Do you about those? You. Uh, there, there's a college volleyball game in uh, Canada, a women's college volleyball game, and five transgender players reportedly dominated that. Yeah. I mean, I had the same thing in high school. We just called it co-ed. Oh, really? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. But you, We're all in, fine. In co-ed, you had to have guys and girls on both sides in like equal <laughs> numbers, right? Yeah, but it, isn't it like sort of an equivalent of what's going on now? It's just a different outfit. Well, I guess when... The other team catches up, and they have dudes to play your dudes on your girls' volleyball right. team. Then everything will even out because eventually, just, yeah. each team will just will just send out dudes with ponytails to beat the other dudes on the other girls' team. So it's just going to be male, right. formerly male volleyball, and you'll have dudes on each side. Or like in nature, with evolution, it'll create competitive environment the competitive environment will maybe create a stronger female like maybe down the line you know how like our supposedly our finger our pinkies getting smaller pinky toes getting smaller these things that we don't utilize or start oh, really like evolutionarily like getting you know weaning off of us maybe this will create like a power woman like a stronger woman mm. that will really come out like just a natural china doll this is just the beginning mm. yeah maybe this will be revolutionary for sports Maybe this will make sports much more fun. It'll be a field of all different types of people who are like, they don't even need the juice per se. Like you said, like the, the football players are all jacked up now. It's just an I evolutionary I, gender sport. They'll yeah. probably test those guys. I don't know if they're all juicing. They're but like you something. said, I mean, obviously there's a lot of factors. No, going yeah, into... I don't mean, I don't mean like jacked up on juice. Oh, okay. I just mean like bread, like like thoroughbreds now. Like, so you don't think there's? I was thinking about this last night. I'm like, man, like to your point, 
the shape of men, the size of men, obviously all of us have changed, but from like the 50s, 60s to now, to the sports now, everyone's so jacked. I don't mean necessarily on drugs, but their structures are huge. Their their muscles are huge. She's looking at me. Mm-hmm. It's you. Yeah. It's you, Lox and Mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The so you don't think any of these athletes are doing anything to enhance their athletic performance whatsoever. I find <laughs> I that hard say, to believe. By the way, I don't like that. I said I don't think they're uh, on. T- <laughs> they're getting chat. I said you're not doing anything ever. Yeah, they <laughs> sit. And they they eat pound cake and yeah. watch TV all day. No, they're they're doing as much as they can, but there's some limit. Where they're getting Fair. tested. Plus, like at some technology, point. just in keeping your body. I feel like what LeBron James has done with his body over the right. years is insane. It's unheard of. Right. But I don't think he is taking steroids. No. That, but I don't know. But I would assume they test for things. They and must. he's probably not. But he's doing everything he can. I'm that's, curious if there's an, a, a different f- type of steroid that maybe doesn't have a test to detect. They I, they always try something, but they usually get caught yeah. mm. at some point, and it's a career ender, I think, for a lot of guys. So I think they're doing every kind of supplement known to man, but I don't know <laughs> if they're doing testosterone or Maybe steroids. <laughs> Taylor right. Swift is the new testosterone. Yeah. She's the test. She'll shave a few years off <laughs> your age and a few tenths off your 40. <laughs> Make it go bald f- mm-hmm. faster. So um, speaking of phones, there's a... A New York-based company that started what they're calling a digital detox program, and they turned it into a contest. So it's called Siggy's. I think they do yogurt. Yeah, mm-hmm. that good mm-hmm. yogurt. Yeah, Siggy's, mm-hmm. yeah. So they're inviting people to give up their smartphone for an entire month. And those who think they can do it, they, they all they do is submit a compelling essay explaining why you need that digital detox. And if you do it, you get $10,000. Uh, a lockbox for your smartphone. But they'll give you a flip phone if so you can still make calls. Oh, really? Yeah. But your phone's locked up. Like, yeah. It's like watching Dave Chappelle for a month. Right. Yeah. It's in that in little concert. bag. Yeah. yeah. Solid reference. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, and you get free yogurt for three months, too. But you're going to need your phone to call your doctor. Sounds totally from doable, right? A lot of yogurt. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's, like that's too I'll, much yogurt. That's way. Only eating yogurt for three months. Yeah. But, but Siggy's is so good. Siggy's is good. Oh, it's my and favorite. it's the good stuff. And get the 4% fat. Don't get the. Get the fat. Get the fat. <laughs> get the fat. Get, don't get the low fat. Why are you getting low? No fat yogurt is, mm. you might as well be sucking on the teat of an animal. That's how gross it is. Yeah. And you, it is better. The fat is better for you. Yeah. It's better. It helps you metabolize the sugar. Get the get the high fat. High fat. Get the Siggies. It's fine. Right. Uh, fruit in the middle. That's my invention. Yeah. Siggies, you're listening. Really, you're listening, Siggies. Um, look, people have problems with distractions and phones and that that's it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's shifted our focus. It's it's changed entertainment. It's changed the way people view. It's changed the way people communicate. It's changed the way people mate. Even like the, like you can't like the way people go when you go to a bar. You can't talk to girls. You can't guys. Like it's harder to to talk to people. Nobody talks to strangers anymore, right? It's just yes. It's just uh, you're only on your phone. You're sitting there. You're on your phone. If somebody comes up to you that you don't know, it's weird now. I think people I like people are gonna anyway. have to. Look, okay, here's the new world order. There's the phone, there's digital everything, there's pornography everywhere, there's fast food everywhere, everything's open 24-7. I mean, there is no, there's just no more guardrails anymore. (laughs) And everybody is just going to have to govern themselves. It is the era of discipline. Yes, that's, that's it. Because when I grew up, it was like, you just take something as simple as this. When I grew up, most stores were closed on Sunday. So sorry, whatever it is you wanted, if it was a Sunday, you weren't getting it on a Sunday. So that was our, like things that were imposed on you. Things closed, you know what I mean? There was no, no such thing as fast food. Fast food probably ended about eight at night. There's no 3 a.m. fast food anything. There's no midnight fast food anything. Like everything was slow boat, COD, allow six to 19 weeks for delivery, you know, like just like, and you had to sort of sit with your thoughts. You had to sort of get creative. You had to have, you had to fantasize, but not in a ridiculous way, like in a creative way, you know, what I'll do this and I'll, I'll try that. 
And the whole world was just slow. Airline travel, well, that was like for rich people. You didn't go, luxury. you didn't hop around. You, you wouldn't go to Vegas for a weekend or San Francisco for a weekend or whatever. You'd eat out twice a year, maybe for your sister's birthday mm-hmm. or something, or someone graduated junior high or something. It's just, there wasn't stuff. So you, you got left alone and you're on your own pace and the pace was slow. And now the metronome has sped up and there's an app for everything and everyone can multitask and everyone can do everything. And there's a self-driving car and there's just porn everywhere and, it's, and there's fast food everywhere and there's junk everywhere. And it just comes flying at you at fast. And so you now are going to have to discipline yourself because there's no amount of blocking this on the phone or any, any program other than you're going to have to be in charge and you're going to have to kind of be like your own hall monitor or um, your own college. What do they call the dorm monitor? RA. RA. You're going to have to be your own RA. RRA. That's it. You just have to do like my, uh, I told him a pool drain. And uh, I usually dunk myself in my freezing cold swimming pool every morning just to wake Shock my shit up just to go who's in charge no Adam there's charge. a pump in there taking out the water right now they lowered it because of the pump yeah. that's why he's paralyzed from the hips there down was today. two <laughs> there were two feet left in the deep end <laughs> that it, message from his cleaning lady was not received and he jumped nanny, in nanny but okay <laughs> nanny nanny there were two foot left of grungy ass water in the deep end <laughs> and I just walked down there and just laid in it that, that, now that had a lot of shit in it because did every, you really? Yeah, everything that was in the pool was down to that last two foot, and my dog Phil came down <laughs> and he walked around <laughs> in it too, and it was it was only like it was probably like eighteen inches deep, and it was scuzzy. I'm pretty sure but, that's how swamp things start. But it was freezing. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian Barbeau popped out, and I just floated in it, and I went underwater in it. Oh! Yeah, no. I was like, you got to fuck yourself up, man. Good for you. That's, that, that changes my whole That'll opinion. <laughs> it is the rare time I took a shower after getting out of the pool because there was, <laughs> there was hair chunk. and sludge and shit in there. But I said, I'm, I'm getting in. Did you I'm see a pair down. of balls floating around <laughs> by any chance? No, I didn't see that guy's yeah. balls. But I did think for a moment as I was floating and that pump was still down there, I thought, God, I hope this thing doesn't short out and this is where they find oh, me. Because everyone will make fun of me. They'll all make fun of me oh, for we doing my pool dunk in my That's underwear. <laughs> you and Phil. In, yeah, me and Phil. Oh, not Phil. Phil had to take a walk, too. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. You got to draw the line somewhere. I I was like, I need my cold dunk. Not the, that bad. There's enough left in the bottom of this pool and it's freezing because it's freezing where I am. I didn't really think about the part where it's going to be a little grody. But when I got into it, I could see there was a film, you know, at the top of it because it was all that had been condensed <laughs> down in the, every solid had just made it to the very bottom of this pool. What, what from this, the, the cell phone conversation made you think of this? You said you have to discipline yourself. Oh, I see. This is your form of discipline. Yeah, you you're right. You discipline yourself by not doing certain things and by forcing yourself to do shit that sucks. Struggling. Like the struggle is so freaking important and i think like what's going on is we're overly gratified like yes. we get everything everything we want and we're witnessing the detriment that that does to society everyone's depressed of course you're depressed you're not struggling like struggles horrible but it's also vital you, i'll tell you what will cure it all fast and what everyone needs to do i can't remember drew's term for it but it's a, it's a sort of a basic common Misery. You just need dumb little tasks. Go clean your garage. Go move some stuff around. Go load this stuff up. Take it over there. Move it over there. Put the thing out. Like just physical tasks, the tasks of your, what people used to do, like back in the day. Just go out, pull some weeds, go out, bake something in the kitchen, like real basic. Clean your garage, wash your own car. Like just basic, normal. Stuff that you know, certain traditional stuff that we used to think was boring, and we we couldn't ha- we couldn't we couldn't wait to outsource it. Let someone else do this. Let someone else paint your office. Let someone else wash your car. Let someone else organize your garage. Let someone clean your refrigerator out. Whatever, just farm it all out. Do it yourself. Just start getting into that yourself. That will keep you the sanest. 
building a tree house with your kid or having like an old car that has, you have a project in the garage. Having a project will keep you sane. What we're seeing is, is nobody's got projects. Nope. Nobody has hobbies. People used to have, you know, first off, they had churches, they had communities, and they had hobbies, man. Like they did stuff. Nobody has hobbies. Every hobby is some sort of digital snarky communication online. Fuck this person. I'm going to tweet them back, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> that that That's not a hobby. The hobby needs to be something physical. Yeah. Pick up a freaking violin at least. Pick up a violin. Carry a load of laundry to the laundromat, even if you have a washer and dryer in the house. Oh, my God. I tell my nanny every day, do something. Do <laughs> something nanny. around here. It's the nanny. It's the nanny. <laughs> All right. Eric Kramer yes. is here. Just me, let me give you a plug. Like I said, Thank back you. from Des doorstep <laughs> to uh, my student, not you, but Eric uh, Kramer. Oh, yeah, that's but, right. Uh, just a good dude. I think you're going to really like uh, what he has to say. Sharp Tongue, name of the podcast, wherever you listen to finer podcasts. Also, dates coming up. We got the Netflix is a joke. That's coming up May 10th. So uh, that'll be in the Bourbon Room, which I think's on Hollywood. Is that on yeah, Hollywood? It's on Hollywood Boulevard. It's a it's beautiful, a beautiful venue. venue. It really is. It's like a like an old timey speakeasy almost. But yeah, it it's does pretty. feel like that. It's beautiful. Yeah, and it's good size. It's a great size. It too. feels like it feels special when you're on stage. It feels like an actual show. Agreed. So Jesse May dot com is where you can go for all the live dates, and we'll have uh, ex NFLer Eric Kramer in the studio right after this. Almost 90% of pharmaceuticals are produced outside the U.S. When a crisis hits, countries clamp down on exports, and that means stockpiling, raising prices, and empty pharmacy shelves. Well, we want to avoid that. And since COVID, our reliance on China for prescriptions has even gotten worse. Be prepared. The wellness company's medical emergency kit Eight life-saving medications, including amoxicillin, z pack and ivermectin, along with a guidebook for safe use, the wellness company's medical emergency kit. Well, supply chain shortages, that can be a problem. Natural disasters, medical emergencies, every scenario is covered with the wellness company's medical emergency kit. Am I right, Dawson? Be prepared for the unexpected. Go to twc.health slash ACS and grab your medical emergency kit right away. That's twc.health slash ACS. Code ACS saves you 10% at checkout. Don't wait until you need it. Take control of your health today with the Wellness Company's Medical Emergency Kit. Kits are only available in the USA. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop in the store. Do it online to receive points and get rewards sent straight to your phone or inbox. Get two, three, four, even five times bonus points on select purchases. Receive bonus points on select items throughout the store like wiper blades, antifreeze, coolant, parts cleaner, motor oil, and more. Those bonus points can help get you to your next rewards even faster. You'll receive a $5 reward for every 150 O reward points to use on your next in-store or online purchase. Members can check points and rewards online anytime. If you're already an O rewards member and not receiving your rewards, just add an email address or mobile phone number. Get a $10 reward for updating your existing account. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, signing up is easy, quick, and simple. Just do it online at O'ReillyAuto.com or in-store at O'Reilly Auto Parts. In honor of Jim Carolla's 92nd birthday, here's a list of all the things Adam Carolla will do before he dies. Demand unmarked bills. Just one of the things Adam will do before he dies. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Well, my old buddy, Eric Kramer's in studio, former NFL quarterback. I think it was 12 years in the league or 11. I missed it. I'm told 11. 11 and then one Canadian. Yeah. 
So, uh, and then we have uh, Detroit. Mm-hmm. We have Chicago, and yep. we have San Diego. Yeah, when the Chargers were there. Was it in that order? No. It was actually Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta. As a strike player. Oh, during the strike. And then, uh, uh, yeah, they kept me after that. Strike players came back, and then not the next year. So then I went up to Canada, played there for like six games. That's what they had left in our season. Came back for another year after that. Then, uh, yeah, then it was Detroit, Chicago, and San Diego. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they said, do you know the only time a kicker got MVP of the league? And I said, a kicker got MVP of the league? Well, I'm, let me let me guess who that was. Yeah. Was it Morton Anderson? It was either Mosley or Morton Anderson. Oh, Mosley. I think it was Mark Mosley. Yeah. And Mark Mosley, yeah. And I said, what? what MVP? And he said, yeah, during the strike season. And I said, I somehow made more sense, but I still didn't make total sense. But I guess everyone was on strike. But they gave the voters. A, they're yes. like, okay, we're just going to give it to a kicker. <laughs> they didn't give it to the quarterback that year. The kicker got. It. I mean, he must be the the only kicker that's ever won MVP of the league. And now, as you probably pointed out, with the quarterback deal, so it's that's probably never going to that will never be threatened. Yeah, and the kickers are just routine money from fifty five. Right? on yeah. all day, every day, which is crazy. Yeah, it's kind of, it's amazing, really, because the, the well, when I mentioned Morton Anderson, that's why I had a, I was a free agent, uh, undrafted free agent, and I went to New Orleans, and that was in the Morton Anderson's heyday. That uh-huh. dude was money from anywhere he felt like kicking it from. Did, um, so for you, and I know they flew you out to Detroit, because I mean, you the last time Detroit won a playoff game, you were quarterback, right? Prior to this year, yeah, yeah. Or prior been, to this year, sorry, been a while. <laughs> yeah, that I was talking to you off the air about Utley, one guard, and then your other guard, and the Eric sort of sack, yeah. tragedy of that. Yeah, it was. Uh, so you mentioned Mike, and yeah, Mike it, in that '91 season, uh, we were playing against the Rams, and he. I forget, Tracy Rocker, I think, was a defensive lineman. Went up to bat the ball. And like all linemen are do, taught to do, when he goes up, you know, cut his legs out, and Mike missed, and instead hit the turf. And uh, to this day, he's still paralyzed from the waist down. It just seems so innocuous at the time. He sort of tried to cut him, and he just sort yeah. of hit head first on, on the turf, which right. was probably and pretty it, hard back then. And it, well, <laughs> yeah, it was green cement. Right. And so, but it was, like you said, it wasn't much of anything. I mean, you didn't see, I didn't even know what happened at first, honestly. And um, it wasn't until the next day, a group of us went to see him in the hospital. And it was a while after that before I even saw it on on film. And it was, I mean, nothing. But you knew when you saw him in the hospital, that was it? It was paralyzed? Yeah. Was it neck down? It was uh, like he still had his upper extremities. You know, mm-hmm. he could obviously move his head, and he could um, uh, fun, he could drive. He could uh, and wheel himself around. But uh, and this was after. So in the hospital, no, he was just laying down. God, what? Is, he's like twenty six. He's been paralyzed. He's lived more of his life paralyzed than not. Wow. So yeah, he was. Probably, I think it's like his third year out of, out of college. In fact, he was in the same draft class as Barry Sanders and Roddy Pete. And oh, really? And two other guys who played for Detroit. Pete played, didn't he? Play yeah. For Detroit? Mm-hmm. Oh. yeah, he did. Um, USC guy. Yep. Uh, I should name the book, by the way, The Ultimate Comeback, Surviving a Suicide Attempt, Conquering Depression, and Living with a Purpose. And that book is Eric Kramer's book, and it's available as we speak, for every fine, finer books. So, and then your other guard had tragedy, tragedy as well, right? So we lost two great players, as you mentioned, Mike Utley first, and then the off season, Eric Andelsek played left guard, and <clears throat> he was from a rural Louisiana town, and he was literally out uh, about to go bass fishing, and he got a big yard, so he mm-hmm. had a riding lawnmower, and it was near the highway, and uh, some. 18 wheeler rolled off the side of the highway and he never saw it coming. Wow. Both guys, like in their early <sighs> mid 20s? Yeah, Eric was probably the same age as Mike. And uh, 
So you lose both your guards, and they were good. They were really good. Like, these are Pro Bowl guys. Mm-hmm. So it had to affect things a little bit. Yeah. I don't know when that's ever happened before. But <clears throat> it was uh, just a, you know, it was tragic enough with Mike. Um, and then, but Eric, like you said, I, I, I'll bet you Eric, I bet, he probably wasn't 25. Did uh, you watch the game? Uh, yeah. They flew you out to Detroit. Detroit had a big win over my Rams on one point. Crazy. We, we, we Those kinda, used to be my Rams, too. Your Rams. Up, yeah. Well, you grew up out here. You're, um, now, I don't know how much you ran out of the shotgun back, no, zero. back when. Never. It was Never. always under center. Yeah. When you, so, but, but, okay, so it starts with the Cowboys, right? And shotgun? It, oh, oh, I mean, going back to the Starbucks. Going back. Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, I'll bet you before, like way in the way back, it was shotgun. But I think, yeah, the Cowboys were the first team I ever saw. So Cowboys used to run out of a shotgun, I mean, when it was passing time. Yeah. And the offensive line used to do this up and down <laughs> right. movement, too. So they were just kind of a weird team, but they, it worked. They won. Um, but then no one else did the shotgun. And so was nobody really doing the shotgun when you were in the league? And I'm, as I'm thinking back right now, no. I don't remember a team that, did, that used it. And now it's hard to find a team that goes under center. Right. At, at any level. High school, junior college, college, pro. They're all running out of the shotgun. Uh, I mean, look at last night. Oh, well, not last night. Well, it was Sunday. I guess that is last night. Um, yeah. uh, it was a fourth down and like one or something. And Kansas City fakes. They're in shotgun. They fake a handoff to the left. Kelsey goes in motion, uh, pulls the flat defender out, and, and, and uh, it's a design quarterback run all the way. Yeah. Got like 15 yards on it. Yeah, big play. Now, what drives me nuts is a guy who used to be a long snapper is all the goddamn <laughs> shotgun snaps on the, at the guy's <laughs> on knees the, or on the, the ground. There, right. I, 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 you tell me what's wrong with this. Tell me what's wrong with this concept. I've been complaining about it for a million years. Okay, here's what happens. The ball comes down at your knees. First off, you know, the Tom Brady's and the Peyton Manning's of the world, these guys are tall guys. When you put the ball down at their shin, they got to go down and get That's it. That's a long way to go. That's a ways to go. And all of their focus. That's like going from the third floor down to the first. Right. Yeah. right. And all their focus is down at their feet. Yeah. Then they retrieve the ball, and then they look up and try to find out where the re- receivers are. Like where, now they're where in a they chaotic are. traffic jam. Right. If you just hit them right in the chest or even on the right side, if they're right-handed, then it's just there, and they can survey the field the whole time. Now, I watched that game yesterday. They're, they're, most of the snaps were at Mahomes' knees. Mm-hmm. Most. <laughs> uh, all of them. Uh, there was nothing. So... Okay, you tell me what's wrong with this. I say, you take that goddamn center every day after practice, go with the ball boy, and give me 50. Just do 50. Right, Mahomes, Before you don't practice, have to do after it. after practice. Whatever oh, yeah. it is, yeah. we're going we're gonna to end or begin every practice with 50 good snaps that hit that guy in the chest. Not because I don't think you can do it, but your confidence. Because when these guys get to the, the biggest game in the world, the biggest mistake they could make in the world is firing the ball over the guy's head. So what happens is you take something off it. I mean, I think it would be the difference between me saying, you know, I have an egg, and and, and I'm going to throw it to you, and if you catch it, uh, I'll give you a dollar, or I'm going to throw it to you, and if you don't catch it, I'm going to die. It's a different throw. You know what I mean? Like I'm leaning, and I'm going, okay, yeah. buddy, you ready? Right? It's going to come in a little low. It's going to real My life maybe. depends on you just, catching this. Yeah, right. I'm not going to just fire it at you. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. And these guys, it's the biggest game of the year, and they don't want to fire the ball back because they're scared it's going to get loose, and if it does, it's going the other way 15 yards, and you've ruined the game, essentially. So, but Mahomes having to pick everyone up off his goddamn shin and off the ground. What? I, I here's as you're saying this, as you're painting this scenario. What makes me, what comes to mind is we had a in Detroit. We had a great special teams coach named Frank Gans, and he said, "I don't care what you do or who you are. You are what you repeatedly do." 
-hmm. And so you rely on your training. So the game itself is played emotionally. So if you're thinking about, oh, my God, this whatever I do next could be the completely wrong thing to do. You, there's, you, it's hard to be successful. Right. So you just do things over and over and over and over, and you get your fundamentals so that it's like you can't miss. So, so this center should have to work and do 50 snaps after every practice. I'm going to guess he gets paid fairly well right. that he can spare – 10 minutes a day doing it. <laughs> it's 10 that. minutes. It's yeah. just literally go go with the ball boy. You stand six yards back, and for 10 minutes, we're just going to do 25 of these things. Just, just pow. All right, I'll it's show like you. We, I told Chris together to put together a, a, little, <laughs> uh, a little collection of this. But don't worry, I'm in it. As yeah. well, just so you just so you know. Oh, were you like uh, on the sidelines, like the whole John well, Candy we made thing? This, and... We made this a send Andy Reid. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Yeah. <laughs> yep, there's one off the ground. Mahomes resets and it, it screws up the whole play. Completely. And the rhythm off the ground. Typically. By the way, Mahomes could have got this guy fired because <laughs> he, <laughs> he's picking the ball off the ground. Huh? All right, now let's see me. Your right hand, I'll put it up here. Okay, already ready. I'll put it right here. All right. About three o'clock. Set, go. Wow, that's pretty good. Set, go. I'm going to tell you what, we may be able to go shotgun this year. Yeah. Set, go. Wow. Okay, just remember. That guy offered me a job playing arena football. (laughs) Did you take it? When I was 45. (laughs) I should have. Had I known what my future was. Remember, you got to block, though, right as you're snapping, though. You got to block. I can block. It's no luck. I'm not. I'm not looking. No, I don't have, I don't have you, my head between my legs. And you hit the dime. It's nails. Put it right on his right side. Yep. I okay. Listen, these guys should be able to do this. You would think. That, that's what I'm. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I didn't warm up. We didn't cook this. I'm old. We just went down there. We just went down there. I was just down there because my buddy was trying out as a kicker for the Avengers. But I said, "Hey, coach." And he literally offered me a job. He didn't offer my kicker friend a job. Well, he probably missed it. You know. He missed a few. Yeah. 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 But he offered me. I'm good at it, but it's not that tough. You should be able to do this. He, Mahomes should be picking the ball off his feet. The story, I, the I mean, a picture's Bowl. worth a thousand words. Yeah. So you just proved it right there. Right side. Yeah. Well, well Eric, Eric coaches now, right? A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah. So you're going to be focusing on the long snapping, right? Never. Some shotgun? <laughs> Never. I, I'm, I completely disagree with the whole shotgun <laughs> business to begin with. You don't like it. Don't like it at all. <laughs> you like your guys under center. Always. Why? Because the timing's better, and you see what's going on. You, have, you don't take your eyes off the ball to receive the ball. Right. So you're, you're actually in the process of, like, you never have to look at the ball. Who are you coaching? Um, high school. Uh-huh. So I, I co- last year I volunteered out at Ventura College. And uh, so I'm actually not coaching right now, uh, mm-hmm. but I have. And so I'm looking to do it again. Was, uh, there was, I was looking at an old picture. So what year did we meet at the East Valley Trojans? Okay. So now I was born in 64. No, so this would have been probably, what, f- uh, eight years after that, 72, 73? Did you? Was there a coach Steen yes. on your team? <laughs> and, a, and a center named Doug. So his son, yeah. Yeah, Doug Steen. Yeah. So because I was looking, you pull up that old picture of me. I was looking at the picture, and I could see the coach. It says Teen, but it's it's it's. Steen. Oh, there you There's are. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's no Doug Steen there. No, that's, that's AC. Coach <laughs> number seventy. <laughs> <laughs> Very sad. Now, were you on the team that lost the championship yes. on the last game? Yeah. To, okay. to North Valley, I think, right? Golden Bears. Oh, God. Did I lose to them two times? <laughs> no, it could have been. I it was know. a Golden Bears, a rainy day. So, yeah, yeah. And we were undefeated the entire season? Yeah. What was your recollection of that? My recollection was all we did was win. Nobody could beat us. And I was confused when we lost to the North Valley Golden Bears. The, yeah, that we didn't go home with a trophy. I don't get it. But I think I was number fourteen. I played yes, tight you were end. Fourteen. Probably didn't catch a pass all season. I don't. I don't. I remember Scott Whitman was the quarterback. Twenty-two. And I think Henry Boyd was on that team. And uh, uh, let's see. I think Gary Usher was on that team. Yeah, he was and, a good player. And um, so you're on that team. That was undefeated and then, and then lost. Yeah. And 
okay, this is good because you reminded me that we <laughs> lost to the North Valley Golden Bears, who I then lost to my final season as a bantam uh, in the championship at the college, college college of the, of the Canyons. Canyons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was, a, I was a venue there for like championship games for youth well, football, football. I lost my first one to the North Valley Golden Bears, and I lost my last one to the North Valley Golden Bears. I had your number. Well, it came full circle, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you, did you get through Pop Warner without winning any championships? Did I get through without? No, we won. You uh, we won a few. With the Dolphins? With the, uh, not Miami, yeah, the Valley Dolphins. The Valley Dolphins. Oh, yeah, we went two or three years and lose. Oh. <sighs> You know how my, my you know how like my dad was a stat freak, right? So there was a a, a year where uh, we scored like over five hundred points and gave up like six or something. something what? Stu- yeah, it was stupid. Jeez, I should have gone there instead of the Sun Valley Falcons. There, we didn't have any character though. Obviously, your character comes when you kind of have some challenges. Apparently, there weren't any. So, do you remember in the in the annals of shit you could never do? Again, which was everything that they did to us, you know, water, run, oh, right, you, run yeah. you ragged, call you candy. I got one comes to mind right now. Go ahead. <laughs> you got one? Yeah. All right, I got one. Uh, Mr. Fitzgerald shows up and he opens the trunk of his car and he goes, I'm going to find out the strongest t- kid on this team is. And he brings a b- dumbbell. No, barbell. <laughs> he just brings a barbell in and he goes, all right, let's do it. And, he, you know, some guy picks it up, like it's, you know, seven-year-old, eight-year-old, like over his head, drops down. And goes, all right, put 10 pounds on. Kid starts struggling. You know, he's like, all right, you're out. Who's next? <laughs> yeah. So I, I did it. I, I had the strongest. I was the strongest Attaboy. guy on the team back before puberty ruined me. <laughs> but I was super strong when I was eight, you know, not when I was 18. But but this guy, this old guy, the guy with the beard just showed up and said, we're going to keep stacking weights on. And, you know, each kid that can't lift it, just go stand over there, go run a lap or something. Just get out of here. <laughs> I got to go viral today. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do you remember that? I don't. But here's, well, that could have been my first year. Here's and what maybe I we do remember that would year. never happen today. Where you get two guys, two kids, they lie on their back, right? Head oh, to head. Yeah. Actually, about five yards Part. Yeah. Whistle blows, they scramble up, and it's just like ramrod. It's yeah, like, it should right. be called the concussion drill. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and uh, I remember doing that. Like, you get you go to jail for that th- these days. Yeah, they, they'd lay out two blocking bags. So yeah. you had a lane <clears throat> about right. 10 feet wide, and then you, you lay on your back. Mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out when you're on your back, do you get up to the right? Do you get up to the <laughs> left? You know, you don't really think about it. But you're laying on your back, then it's laying on your back. And just blow that whistle and just scramble and just mash into the other guy as hard as you can. I've seen that before. Maybe it was just like... Yeah, it's a, uh, you, you, you probably saw it on, on like one of those uh, high school football movies. Mm-hmm. Like, um, God, what was, what, was the, what was the one with, um, the, you know, Varsity, Varsity Blues, Blues or something oh, yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah probably that. They had, it, they had another one which was just ninety degrees. You just yeah. go down the sideline, the guy go down the hash line or whatever, and just just run into. Well, so he can blow who up, right? Yeah, just mash into. Well, you know they never do. They never do bull in the ring. Nope, they never do. I remember when I coached my son Griffin, that's what he wanted to do. Do bull in the ring? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. So we kind of had a version of that, and he was eight, and this is an eight, nine, and ten year old team. And he called out this one ten year old, and it was well, bull in the ring. They make a big circle. Yeah, you get in the middle, and they just start calling out names, and they get a run and start and try to knock you out <laughs> yeah. of the ring, which is it's the most intense thing a ten year old can do. Yeah, and, and so I, I did it in high school too. I, by the way, it didn't end. I well that yeah the the level of knowledge going whatever high up it goes that's what you're still doing. But now I remember Dylan calling this kid out, and he was obviously bigger and stronger. And um, we just we never did that again, because Dylan Dylan I mean sorry Griffin had like a reality check at that very moment. Like oh maybe that was a bad idea. How do you call a kid out in bull in the ring? Um, just like okay I'm gonna go against you. Oh, because the way so and you, and you 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 don't like run at him while he's standing still. Like you get. You know, probably three or four yards apart. Uh huh. You're standing up, and then you're gonna collide shoulders. Oh, see, that's not what I would call bull in the ring. No, I I know what you I know what you're talking about. 
We, we got, didn't do that. Yeah, that's a little we, more ceremony. We had the whole <laughs> team in a circle, and they just <laughs> stand in the middle of this 30-foot circle of right, right. human beings. Right. And the coach would, like, call out a guy, and he'd just run and start, but you got one pop, you know, and you had a, you're up, you're up doing the Mike Singletary a Jack Lambert foot move. Da, 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 yeah, and, yeah. You know, looking, looking, looking. They call, <laughs> but they would speed up. They would start speeding up as they got going, and then they would start calling guys who were behind you and stuff like that. You know, and you're just like, it was, it was way more intense than any right. kid should ever have to yeah. experience. No, I, I, let me just say, the the guy who really taught me how to coach football was Clay Matthews. Oh, really? The the dad, not the one that went to a girl high school. But uh, Clay Matthews, the dad the one of the Matthews, it. USC, Ma- Browns. Yeah. Well, they both went to USC, but yeah, the Browns, yeah, that guy. Yeah, people don't realize there's Matthew brothers and uncles. Yeah, and, I know. They're all over the place. But anyway, Clay, for being, for having played him and his brother both, for having played as long as they did, I don't know his brother, uh, Bruce, but. Oh, Bruce, uh, yeah, the offensive line. Yeah. But Hall of Famer. Clay was great at just. Fundam- play linebacker, yeah. Fundamental drill progressions. Really? I mean, it was literally how to have contact, how to stand, how to move, how to backpedal, how to, you know, do, you know. You, you know, it struck me that Clay Matthews, and not the Clay Matthews from Green Bay. Yeah. But he had the real long hair. Right. Yep. His, his dad or his uncle, the other Clay Matthews, or was that his uncle? Well, his, his linebacker for Cleveland. That's Clay. His he had dad. The, he had the long hair too. They both did. Yeah. He had the long hair in the league in the eighties. Yeah. Which is, he was a forerunner to the long hair. So Clay Matthews is a junior. The Cleveland S- linebacker is a junior. Of oh, the Cleveland. Well, then what about the Clay Matthews from the Green Bay Packers? Am I screwing this you, up? No, you're not. But I, I don't know how it all falls myself. I thought he was his uncle or something. But anyway, he had the hair going. Anyway, we'll figure out who's Clay Matthews' dad. So Clay Matthews Jr. Uh, is the guy in Cleveland. And then, um, let's see, remember, and then his the dad, brother their of, dad played in uh, San Francisco. Oh, he's, he's Clay Matthews Jr.'s son. So Clay Matthews Jr.'s son is Clay Matthews on the Packers. He's Clay Matthews the third. Oh, he's a third. Yeah. Oh, that's why it's so goddamn confusing. Yeah, I know. It's, but he taught you. Now you, you're into the Roman numerals. Are you looking <laughs> to? Are you looking to coach? Are you yeah. looking to make your way in and sort of make your way up? Yeah, definitely. I just, uh, I mean, I've I've been an assistant coach enough now where it's no, it's not really to do it right. You got to be the head coach. And where do you want to start? You think? I don't care. Uh, high school, college? yeah. That's all I want to do is coach high school. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so I'd go to an zero and ten team in a heartbeat. Hmm. Well, I think they'd have you because your resume, right? Yeah, I, I talked to uh, a, a school not too long ago. They they went zero and ten last year. Did they pass on you? I didn't coach. I, I well, I mean, you talked to a school, but I mean, are they? Oh yeah, they did. They pass on me. Like yeah, thanks. He was like, you know, we're gonna we're not gonna. Have, I, I basically told him, look, here's what I do, and you know, uh, if and when you move on from the guy that did go zero and ten, let me know. Because <laughs> I'm sure he's not putting that on his resume. Do you ever go back and look at uh, old footage, game film, and stuff like that? Are you back in the day? Not really. I mean, I've, I've um, no, I don't. Why not? Hmm. Because I don't, I, I don't know. I don't. I've done it. I don't have to go watch it. I would watch it. Would you? Want to have a watch party? Yeah, I would it. go watch you. <laughs> what was your playing? What was your um, recollection of? Because Adam talked about hearing about you when you were on the Lions, right? And you're like, oh, that's the guy who played Pop Warner or uh, right. Pop Warner. Well, what about you with Adam? When did you first hear about Adam and thought, oh, I know that guy? I'll tell you when. So when I was in Chicago, um, I was playing with the Bears, <clears throat> and we used to Sunday night like Bears wrap up show. It's like around, uh, I think I was going literally going home like around eleven o'clock at night, and Drew would be on with Dr. Drew, I'm not Drew, Adam would be on with Dr. Drew on Loveline. And I would, I had an entertaining ride home for about an hour, which I thought Adam was the funniest I'd ever heard. 
even like I don't remember him as a kid being like that, but hmm. I, he would have had to been. But like uh, that was that was that was how I got. You know, I'm thinking, damn, this dude's got it going on. And the name was familiar enough. No, I you remember. Yeah, well, that's yeah. An, it's an interesting thing because I don't know another. I've never heard of another Adam Carolla. Yeah. But I, I'm sure there's one out there. <laughs> Eric Kramer's a little more common of a name, but I didn't have that much time off between the last time I saw you and then you showing up in the NFL. I mean, it was it was 13 years, you know, 10 years, something, something yeah. in that range. Right. But it wasn't 20 years. You know what I mean? For for me, you had a long time off before hearing my name because I didn't get, I didn't become anything close to famous until I was in my 30s, like early 30s. So, you know, when I saw you last, I was 11. And when you heard me on the radio, I was 31 or 32. <laughs> so you had 20 years of, you know, not of worrying no Adam about Carolla. me. Of yeah. no Adam Carolla, which yeah. is a blissful 20 years <laughs> of no <laughs> me. But it, it's interesting <laughs> that it came back, you know, but it is interesting that when you get older and, you know, people go like, oh, who'd you work on the man show with? And I'll go, hey, you know, whatever, what's his nose? That, that guy's <laughs> name is the fat guy, the bald guy, that guy. You know, but you start, you know, I, I sit with Eric, or I talk with Eric, and he starts talking about the East Valley Trojans from 1973. And he goes, you remember Lee Quaylar? And I'm like, yeah, I know Lee. I remember Lee. Or Schneider. Right, right. Like it's Schneider. Weird. Yeah, Schneider you just brought up. They had an apartment in like Van Nuys. His mom drove a green Mustang. Remember the parents? Like, no, I remember not, the parents. I remember going over to the Boyd's house, yeah, Henry right. and James yep. Boyd's. You yep. know, they had the older brother and stuff. I remember Chance Fitzgerald and Steen. I couldn't remember his Doug first Steen. name, Doug Steen, and like I just oh, Scott Whitman and, and yeah. Usher and all these guys. I remember all these guys. Yeah, I mean the whole. Mr. Burcham, the whole thing that got me into show business is named after a guy named Eric Burcham who played for the Sun Valley Falcons. I just, I was like, that he was good. I was like, it's got a good name. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I remember back to Doug Steen. So, like, you know how kids will goof off before practice. Well, <clears throat> I remember going up behind Doug and kind of getting on all fours and somebody else pushed him over the top of my you know right so he fell Classic. backward yeah Classic. yeah and i remember his dad going what in the hell did you just do? almost like he was gonna like <laughs> take me by the neck and pump me you know like, coach steen yeah squeeze me out now you had did you have duke gallagher yeah danny gallagher yeah son speedster yeah yeah cute cute daughter kelly really i said i didn't get that far Oh, really? <laughs> I wasn't scoping the parents or the siblings. Oh, I was scoping. Doing nothing but scoping. <laughs> <laughs> and then here you are today. Doing yeah. The same thing. Love here it. I am. All right, let me give uh, the book out one more time. The Ultimate Comeback, Surviving a Suicide Attempt, Conquering Depression, and Living with Purpose. I am, as your dad once told me, tickled pink, Eric Kramer, mm. that... Uh, you have uh, come such a long way and come back from so much and done so much and have Thank such you. a uh, attitude, yeah. positivity. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. It, it's been a great resurgence, I would say. You know, and uh, life sometimes has a way of presenting some roadblocks that are very, very difficult. And uh, I succumbed to it myself. And then in writing this book, um, that. It's been amazing to me how many people, uh, this goes so far beyond my journey, that other people have um, expressed, whether it be through um, text messages with people that have known me my whole life to people that never met me, um, and um, you know, asking me to come speak to their functions or companies or you know school districts, and it's just been very rewarding. Just because of the subject matter so varied, it's yes, I you know depression is a serious and anxiety is a serious thing, um, and and if you've never had it, you're probably in the minority, and if you've never known somebody have it, you're further in the minority, and um, and so I think it gives people a way of saying, hey, man, this wasn't just me here. And, uh, and 
And I think the, the NFL uh, and society in general has recognized that there are you know, kids especially, um, you know, with, when it comes to mental health, especially after the pandemic, after COVID, um, that it's, it was such an isolating um, thing to people. And then you see people, you know, getting sick and even dying. And um, it, I think it's made people sort of the whole two or three years there of kids um, grow kind of fearful, really. And having a place to, having people to come express that to, and whether it be your friends and, or, uh, you know, a therapist or somebody on a campus in the NFL, they have clinicians with each team now. And uh, I'm, you know, I've got a program myself, Mental Health Touchdown, that it hasn't been sponsored just yet, but I think I've talked to you about it before, uh, starting with young kids and families of, uh, you know, learning before, before something like bullying ever occurs or, or anxiety ever occurs, that you start to build your own little home team of people. And uh, whether they be a parent at that age or, a, you know, a coach, a friend, uh, this is a this is going to be somewhat something of a mentorship type program too, because we're gonna, you know, it's going to start out as an after school program. So, you know, at that age, if someone's a year or two older than you, you know, maturity wise, not necessarily uh-huh. age wise, but uh, you know, someone that looks like a not only approachable, but who may approach you in a way that looks appealing. And so, teaching people how to we're observing anyway. You're, you're, we're all being observed. So you might as well take advantage and, A, know you're being observed, and then not only observe that, but then start to talk about what qualities do you like in those that you observe. And then, great, we're going to teach you how to build your own home team. Those are things we can act out. And, I don't uh, want to I don't wanna disagree cool. with you, but when you're pulling the ball off your foot because the center can't hit you in the yeah. chest, <laughs> you're not there's observing. No redemption. There's no, right. you're not observing the defense. Yeah. That's that's my point. You're pulling the ball off <laughs> okay, your so foot. He, we not can kick observing. Him. We can kick, kick him out of the out of class for sure. Kick yeah, that guy. We need out. To add, add a new chapter when it goes to paperback. <laughs> so, Eric, where should I send people if they want to find this? You? Is this? You can be found. Uh, you can be found. This <laughs> book can be found on Amazon, and uh, I've got a website, Eric Kramer Twelve. That was my number. Dot com. And uh, it's going to start to transition into, uh, you know, these little speaking engagements that get that uh, we'll put a little package together. So what that's all about. Well, thank you. Very important work. So thank yeah, you. and uh, that. Thank we you. can get together, get our little reunion, our little I Trojans know. reunion going. Well, we'll do it. We'll do it. We were just, in fact, Gary Usher and, and Henry Boyd. I don't know if you knew uh, Ron uh, Foster, uh, but they put a little something to get together. Not the thing that was going to happen in Simi Valley, but uh, yeah, it'll it'll come together. Let's do it. All right. You can go to uh, adamcroll.com for all of my live shows coming up at Jimmy's Club in Vegas, February 22nd. And until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Eric Kramer and Jessamay Peluso saying mahalo. <laughs>